The Catholics of Oz is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to episode 86 of The Catholics of Oz. The Catholics of Oz is a show where we discuss faith, culture, and what's been happening from an Aussie perspective. Whether it's synods or science, apostolates and apps, providence or productivity, you can hear it right now on The Catholics of Oz. Hello, I'm Lindsay Sant. Welcome to episode 86 of The Catholics of Oz. Very happy to have you all here with us. This is a very special episode, one that we look forward to doing every year, although this time... It's just me looking forward to doing it because I'm all alone. <laughs> so, um, but I am joined. I'm very excited about this. The CEO of the StarQuest Network, Don Bettinelli. How are you today? I'm good, Lindsay. It's so great to be with you. Although I, I do miss uh, Lino and Caroline. Uh, it is uh, I, I miss Lino's laugh. I mean, that who, who doesn't miss that when it's not here? So uh, yeah. D- yeah, yeah, definitely. Right now, all you'd get is Lino's cough because he's uh, <laughs> under the weather again, unfortunately. So, yep. uh, yeah, hopefully he'll get better soon. Um, and Caroline is almost ready to return to us. We've um, so as I was mentioning just before, we've had my our younger sister Marilyn. Her wedding uh, was just a couple of days ago, and uh, we were both involved, as, you know, in the bridal party. So we had a lot to do there, and um, and now. We're both very tired and Caroline's still recovering. <laughs> she's she's exhausted, the poor thing. So, uh, yeah. So hopefully we'll get the band back together um, in the next episode. We'll see how we go. But uh, Dom, just as the show host, uh, I'm giving you authorization to cut their pay for the episodes they're missing oh, at the yes. moment. Yes, they will not get their usual rep- uh, recompense for yeah. these episodes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. We've got to show them, show them what's what. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Right. All right. So um, before we begin, um, if you are listening to this show and you're new to listening to the Catholics of Oz, welcome. We'd love to have you on board as, uh, as a listener. You can subscribe to the Catholics of Oz on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast player. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating and some positive feedback so that we could hear from you and reach new people, which is what we are all about. We love uh, having new people on board and hearing from them as well. SQPN also hosts the Catholics of Oz and all of its shows on YouTube, so you can subscribe there. Just search up SQPN, hit the bell to get notifications when new episodes of this show and any other show are released. Uh, So, Dom... Uh, there's a before we so the the purpose of this episode it's basically a, a state of the network so basically mm-hmm. we uh, we have you on as a uh, as a guest and we like to talk about what's happening in uh, uh, with Starquest and my goodness in the since the last time we've had you there's been a lot of things that have happened so oh yeah um, it, yeah excited to go through those and then we'll just talk about some of the shows uh, uh, you know well all of the shows really and I feel like this uh, this episode we have with you gets longer and longer every year because there's a lot of shows to go through so we'll see how we go with that sure yeah uh, yeah we should do like a Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World and have a part one and a part two for some <laughs> of those longer topics <laughs> <laughs> you know I was thinking you, you kind of did that uh, earlier this uh, this year with the yeah, the, the plenary council documents uh, when you, right. you, were, you were going in depth on those. So yeah, feel free. Part one, part two. <laughs> that was like a seven part epic, I think, going through those documents. Yes. That's a lot of homework to get that one all sorted. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Dom, just a couple of updates on the network. I think one of the biggest things, uh, biggest developments was the starting of um, a Discord channel, which um, is great. Tell us all about it. How did it come about and what have you seen happening so far? So one of the things that I've seen other uh, communities create these Discord communities and Discord, for those who don't know, is another kind of social network that kind of built up around gaming. It was I think it was gaming was the original big reason behind it. And people would gather there and you can actually do streaming like video streaming to Discord and and that sort of thing, which may be something we explore at some point where we uh, record our shows live in front of a discord audience that would be kind of fun yeah. uh but uh i've seen some other podcasters do this a uh, father roderick has has had a discord community for a while and one of the reasons behind it is you know you got facebook you get twitter but there was really no place that was our own and you know facebook has its problems where you know like facebook pages people who subscribe don't get to see all the posts and it was just and there's all kinds of other distractions and so discord gives us a place that's just for us and yeah. uh, 
uh, it's really nice. You get there's all kinds of we ha- we set up channels for each show. We also have a section for spoiler discussions of sort like when there's yep. a new show or something. So people can put spoilers in there. And then we have some general places uh, like uh, people get a meme channel. We just started a music channel. There's a book channel. Yep. So it's a really nice. It's grown into a nice community. Over 600 people who are members now. So it's a really nice space for us. Yeah, and I like seeing how it's evolved over time since it's begun. There's uh, people have requested channels for different things. You've got a scouting channel, which is a personal personal interest of you and some of the listeners as well. Yeah, so it's it's good to see that evolve. And I think the spoilers channels was really good because I think some people wanted to talk about shows that, you know, episodes that have come out right away and others haven't seen it. So that was a a really good move too. Yeah, that was a selfish thing. I I hate being spoiled. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah. I'm well, like, same here, same here. so whenever there's like a new episode I haven't watched yet, I'm like, I avoid the spoiler channels until yes. I've watched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically stay off all social media, especially when you know it's going to be a big episode in a series too. You've got to stay away from everything until, yes. yeah, until you've had a chance to watch it yourself. Yep. Yeah. How good are you at keeping up with, uh, with different TV shows? I know you have to record about some of them, but do you manage to watch things as they're hot off the press or do you have to wait a day or two sometimes? I sometimes have to wait a day or two, but even like even now, like um, the Rings of Power, which we'll be talking about mm. in, a little more in depth in a few minutes. But uh, like the Rings of Power, where I so I live on the east coast of the U.S., so yep. the episodes would drop at midnight my time, oh, and yeah. so I'm I I was often. Like I can't watch like first thing in the morning. I'd have to wait till that Friday night, and people, and the, even that is is hard to keep from people spoiling. Like I, people don't sleep. I think or something. <laughs> That's right. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it it can be it can be hard. It's not too bad though. I generally have been pretty good at avoiding spoilers. I I'll, I'll stay off of Twitter. For instance, you know, for oh yes, yeah, because yep. Twitter's just it it's just rife with that sort of thing, and uh, uh, people yeah. get very excited. But a lot of the people I follow are generally pretty good, I think. Yeah, so I think I think Twitter has been the worst for Rings of Power spoil. I've had to stay off Twitter until it's it of yeah. all the shows, everything else has been right. Twitter it was the worst. I think the fans have just gone crazy with spoilers. <laughs> you know, yes, yeah. yeah. Luckily, I managed to avoid the the big revelation that we'll talk about later, like yeah. until the episode. So thank goodness for that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 funny because it used to be when you when I was a kid, TV shows aired at a particular time, you know, 8 yep. p.m. Thursday night yep. is whatever. And that's when you watched it and you couldn't wait. Like, I mean, if you had a VCR, you might and you figured out how to program it. You could do that, you know, record it. And so there was appointment television. Well, now we've kind of got back to that because even though it's streaming, if you wait, you might get spoiled. So you got to watch yes, it as soon right. as it's yeah. out. It's like we yeah. watch uh, in my house, we watch uh, Star Wars new episodes of Star Wars shows yep. come out Wednesday mo- uh, morning. So mm-hmm. Wednesday late morning, usually usually just before lunch, we all gather together, the whole family in the uh, in the in, you know in the TV room, and we watch whatever the new Star Wars is. That's just a nice. it's appointment TV for us. Yes, definitely. Yeah, same with us. We're uh, so Wednesday night. So Andor has been Wednesday nights at the moment. So that's been our time to sit down and watch it and yeah. avoid any any spoils that come out beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll get to that soon. Um, I wanted to also, uh, in addition to the Discord channel, I guess uh, give you some time to talk about um, the the giving campaign of the network and some of the things that it's linked to. Because I know, for example, that uh, there's been more shows that uh, have been recording with video, so it's available on YouTube. So I think Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World. Secrets of Star Trek is doing it now. I think yep. are they the only two at the moment that are doing video, or are there, so, are there more? Secrets. So uh, Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World, Secrets of Star Trek, Secrets of Doctor Who, and Secrets of Stargate are all ah, now yes, doing video. Right. And uh, the yep. it's it's a bit of an experiment to see how it goes. We're using this service called Streamyard that we're recording on right now that records yep. it as a nice video, and so it's fairly easy. I mean. When there's edits, you have to go in and do do some editing and stuff. But um, it's it it creates a nice product that is uh, fairly easy to put up on YouTube and uh, it adds some interest. People can see you, and you know we'll always be an audio first you know network. You'll al- we'll always yeah. have our shows on audio and and make them for audio. But sometimes video can add a little extra. Uh, so we've been experimenting with that. But um, yeah, we're we've been doing a a giving campaign because the more we do in this vein and the more shows we get, the more people we need to bring in. I mean, we've kind of, we've about hit our limit on, on the number of shows that we can produce with the current 
staffing. Uh, the, yeah. the the secret to StarQuest is everybody's a volunteer. I, literally, mm. like I, we were joking about cutting people's pay earlier. <laughs> I, I'm really the only full time employee. We also have a, a part time, uh, uh, you know, chief financial officer and bookkeeper um, in Linda, and uh, and we you know, but we have a few people that we pay as like contractors that do some things for us. But in mm. general, you know, we, we're one employee, and so we've kind of our supporters have been very generous. But but we've kind of hit a limit of what we can do without growing the, the our fundraising, and uh, we want to do more video. We want to add more shows and and that sort of thing. And um, we can only do that with more giving. Right. Yes. And I've um yeah I've been hearing on some of the the different shows that I listen to about the the call for um anyone who can to you know either increase you know because the Patreon is the best way isn't it, in terms of if we want people to to support the network that'd be the best place for people to do that. Right. So if if you if you want to support us you, know, you can go to sqpn dot com slash give and then there are a couple options from there. If you go to Patreon, so we we have our Patreon page there and you set up a pledge, you can there are a number of benefits you can get from doing that, mm -hmm. including you uh patrons uh, are able to ask jimmy questions that he answers in his special patrons question episodes uh you can ask jimmy aiken uh a question oh uh, and then there we also have some things at different giving levels you can get books and that sort of stuff we we have uh gifts that we like to give out uh but if some people don't want to use patreon they they have a uh, you know various reasons for that we so you could also give directly through our website. Now you can mm -hmm. set up a, a one time or a recurring pledge directly through our site. Um, and, you know, you know, with a credit card or Apple pay and all those different things like that. So uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for people to give us money. Uh, we're, we, you know, we, we are always uh, open for people to support us through that. And people have been very, like I said, very generous. Um, and we've yeah. had a few sponsors, which um, they're not exactly advertisers. They're, we, you know, primarily they, it's sort of like the public broadcasting model where they are people with businesses and they want to support the network and uh, they'll, they, they give it a slightly higher rate. And we mention them and their business at, at a certain point, a couple of times during a show or, um, you know, on our website and that sort of thing, just to thank them. And that has been going really well too. We've had a number of very loyal sponsors who give every month, which is really good. Yeah, and when you hear the ads, they start to come <laughs> stay in your head as well. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, and it's uh, grateful for that um, for what they do to do uh, to keep us going as well. And uh, also, a fun way that people can support the network is by buying merch as well. Yes, we now have lots of merch, yeah. and we want to add some more. We, uh, I, there is a notable gap in the uh, merch selection for Catholics of Oz that so we need to get something there. I was thinking maybe having a you and Lino and Caroline and a drop bear, maybe that would be kind oh, of yes. funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, just but, running away from it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, sqpn.com slash merch. Uh, we have lots of t shirts that are related to different shows. So uh, we have uh, Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World, Two Good. Star Trek, Secrets of Doctor Who, Secrets of Stargate, Secrets of Star Wars all have uh, related merch. And like I said, we want to add some more. Um, and uh, we, we even have a, fa a special Father Cory Stika collection I put together. They were nice. joking about it on, <laughs> on Secrets of Stargate. So I said, oh, I'm going to go do that. What? So let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's a collection of all the shirts with Father Cory on it, which is really fun. And, oh, I love that. That's great. Yeah. 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 So yeah. yeah, lots of not just yeah. shirts, but you can get it on mugs and all kinds of other things yep. too, like that that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's excellent. Well, when summer rolls around, I need a few new t-shirts. So I might have to browse the merch store and get a few good ones. So, there you uh, go. Yeah, I do love the secrets of Star Trek design. Uh, you know, with I think with Jimmy was riding the Enterprise, and they had the two of you there, all, all in you know, um, in, in Star uniforms. Trek uniforms and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's a lot of fun. I'm hanging on to the nacelle on the back. Uh, yeah, with that's my, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's excellent. Well, while we're talking about uh, patrons and giving, I might just take this opportunity to, uh, before we continue to um, thank some patrons uh, that support the network. So today I would love to thank James B, Father John E, Priscilla H, Jennifer W and Darius M. Through their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give, they make it possible for the Catholics of Oz and all the other great shows on, on StarQuest to continue. So you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give, and plus all the other things that Dom has just said about ways that they can support the network too. Right. So uh, um, for this episode, a massive thank you to everyone who supports the StarQuest network. And please also remember that your prayers are just as important too. So we um, please pray for this network and for its growth and the direction it's going in as well. Yeah. So... 
it's come to that time, Dom. Let's talk about uh, some shows on the network. Yes, let's and, do that. Uh, yeah, and for the format of this, what I thought was uh, you had a great Ask Me Anything, or AMA, as the young people say, <laughs> um, <laughs> on Discord. Uh, and you had a ton of questions, but well done for keeping up with all those questions, by the way. They were fun. Uh, yeah, so I thought I might just, uh, with each show, I might just throw in a themed AMA question and see how you go with these. Okay. I think they're okay. I think, I think you should manage, but we'll see how you go. <laughs> right, so you're going to be under the spotlight a bit today, Dom. You may right. not come back to the show after this. <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is an exciting one. Uh, let's start with the newest show uh, on the network, and that is The Secrets of Middle Earth. Yes. Uh, I, I love that this show exists, and I'll tell you why just to start with, and I'll get you to make some comments on it. First of all, everyone who is on the show is an absolute not just a Tolkien fan, but to me, an, a Tolkien expert. And I love that because yeah. I, I know a bit about uh, about Tolkien and, and the history but of Middle, Middle Earth and so on. I'm not an expert on the level that they are. And I've been learning so much about the background to the Lord of the Rings itself, which I love, and, uh, and just hearing just from their fandom and their excitement as well. So, Dom, tell us about the secrets of Middle, of, of Middle Earth, why it came about, and I'm sure there's an obvious reason, yeah. but why it came about and, and what this show is going to do. Well, this this is a uh, a passion project for me because um, as soon as I'd heard that the Amazon was doing a Tolkien series, I said we have to bring back the Secrets of Middle Earth, and that's the actually a little known fact is the Secrets of Middle Earth is an, actually a fairly old show in the network that Father Roderick mm-hmm. used to do, and then it kind of right. went away for a long time. Uh, you know, he did it when the movies were out and that sort of stuff, and they were still you know the the Hobbit movies, and then it kind of went away for a while, and then. I said, it's time to revive it because I am a huge Tolkien fan. Like I love star Mm -hmm. Wars and star Trek and Dr. Who, but my first love is Lord of the Rings and and the Tolkien's works. I first Mm -hmm. picked up the Hobbit when I was uh, 10 years old. I think when my, uh, I picked it off my mom's uh, bedside table. I said, what's this? And (laughs) and from that moment on, I was, I was caught. Uh, I've, I've read the Lord of the Rings, you know, 17 18 20 times something like that wow uh, you yeah. know it's it's just a, a huge passion for me. i have an entire bookshelf over my shoulder that Lindsay can see of yep. all tolkien books so this is a passion for me and so i said we need to get this going and so i reached out to people within our who are already making shows with us but also to some folks outside our, our community and to see if we could find some folks who would do it so we have a great panel thomas Sanherho is the host mm-hmm. and we also have thomas salerno who has uh come on board as a panelist on a number of our shows since yep. the last time i was with you uh and he's been doing great he's a great freelance catholic freelance writer uh and uh, i'm really encouraging him to do more and more shows with us because uh For sure. people need to hear his voice uh and then uh, jeff hecker who's new he came in new for the secrets of middle earth and caitlin for for I guess say it right, Fasista. Uh, it's, it's a nice Italian name, but I want to pronounce it right for her. Caitlin Fasista, <laughs> um, yeah. who folks might know on social media uh, as she uses the handle T with Tolkien. Mm-hmm. And she was a, a great find for me because she is a, she's a Catholic mom of five. I, th- I think it's five or might be six now. She just had a baby. Like in between right. yep. episode seven and episode eight of The Rings of Power, she just <laughs> had her baby and she and she made it to episode eight. She is a huge Tolkien fan. Dedication. That's dedication. <laughs> and big enough of a, of a fan and uh, in, in Tolkien influencer, dare we say, that Amazon invited her to a number of their Rings of Power That's uh, right. Yeah. Uh, marketing events. Once to, in, to Oxford. Uh, they flew mm-hmm. to Oxford. Another time they flew to New York wow. for the premiere. Uh, they wow. they said it's not a premiere. It's it's just a, a a first screening. I think there's there's some technical difference, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so um, then and and obviously it was we we got it together because of the new Rings of Power series, which has you know Amazon is spending a billion do- dollars a, a season on or something crazy like mm. that. I mean this is a huge epic, and Tolkien is. His works are as you know very Catholic. This is exactly what we're we're here to do: is explore yeah. the intersection of faith and pop culture. And this is where this is where they're intersecting. And so we can reach a lot of people with this. And it's been so fantastic. I love listening to each episode as they go through it. Definitely, and uh, yeah, I, I remember uh, hearing that uh, she'd gone to one of the, uh, it might have been the premiere or something, but she'd spoken to some of the the actors as well. Yes, and I remember in the, in the first episode uh, when when you were there, you know, as, as one of the panels to start it off, she was mentioning that uh, that even the actors care so much about this and they want it to go really well. 
Uh, and I've been reading more about them. It's been, yeah, like just they're, they're interested in wanting to be, to be a success too, about how the fans are going to react oh, yeah. to it. Yeah. And, and the, I love the attitude. I mean, it, it could be just uh, acting like they've, they've learned uh, to promote well, but yeah, it sounds really great <laughs> yeah. because like yeah. the, the actor who plays Ellen Dill was in an interview where he talked about, he read the book of Job to get right. inspiration for his character. And Ooh, yeah. uh, Charlie Vickers, who plays Hal Brand, I won't say what, yeah, his other name, but <laughs> and something uh, else, and something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was talking about you know the, diving into Tolkien's works, not just into the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion, but into his deeper writings to get more inspiration mm. for his character and to really. And I'm like, wow, this is great. And some of the unexpected characters, like uh, the dwarves, I loved the dwarves in this great. series. So good. Uh, yeah. Disa and Durin are just the power couple. I love them. They're great. Yes. Uh, and and it's so. Uh, yeah, it's been so great. And and like you mentioned, Caitlin has had that chance to meet so many of these actors and she brought her impressions of them and her conversations that she had with them to the show. And it added some awesome, you know, uh, richness to their discussions. Yeah. And I've also, uh, so since the show started, I, that was my discovery of the tea with Tolkien handles. So I've been listening, like yeah. following Caitlin's commentary there and, uh, yeah. And, and listen to that. It's been really, I was reading that I should say, but it's been really good. Now let's, uh, let's address this question, right? So in terms of, so now I'm going to put it out there. I love the series. I really enjoy it. Uh, and I, again, I'm not, uh, as well versed in this big history that Tolkien has created, which by the way, blows me away that there's a whole history to middle earth that precedes the hobbit and lord of the rings oh, i think yeah. that's a that's uh, yeah i have no words to describe how amazing that is uh so uh, obviously fans are going to be very passionate about their favorite shows we see it with star trek we see it with star wars and doctor who and everything else yep and uh for me I think this has been a good adaptation because i think it's difficult to capture everything and put it into a TV show. And I think that I think they have the rights to the notes that were in, in the appendix of the Lord of the Rings from memory. Right. So that, that's what they're going off. Um, in terms of uh, I, the, you're a, you know, you're obviously a, a much more knowledgeable fan in terms of your history of Lord of the Rings. What's your feeling in terms of how the adaptation has gone so far? Are you happy with it? Is it, does it fall short of your expectations or meet them? Where do you feel, where do you stand with that? I'm very happy with it. Now I'm, mm. I'm fairly easy to please with, with, with things like this. I was okay with the Hobbit movies pretty much right, until yeah. about three quarters of the way through <laughs> halfway through <laughs> this, the third movie. But, but in yeah. general, I've, 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 I've long maintained that movies and books or TV shows, which are like movie in their scope, like this one is are two different things, two different art forms, and they require different ways of telling stories. And so you yeah. can't tell them in the same way. And so when you adapt something from a book to the screen, it's going to necessarily have to be different. You, you know, time compression was one of the big complaints about yes. Rings of Power. Yeah. But, you know, it's hard to tell the story over 2000 years in a TV series. I mean, you could jump ahead a lot. You, you'll lose a lot of characters that way. You'd get to see maybe Ellen, the, 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 the human, the man characters for like an episode and then they're gone, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, yep. so they're having to compress. So I'm okay with that. Um, they've made some other changes and halfway through the season or two thirds of the, through the season, I was like, wait a minute, this this seems weird. This is the whole mithril <laughs> thing seemed too far. Right. Yeah. Yep. But then they brought it back and like, and they mm. kind of rounded it out and, oh yeah. And even the things that seem to be a big departure, actually, yeah. if you read what Tolkien himself wrote, it is not a big departure. And one mm. of the things that a lot of fans have to remember is that they say, oh, it's so different from the Silmarillion. Yep. The Silmarillion that was printed was not the compiled by the final work by J.R.R. Tolkien. It Correct, was yeah. the compilation of Christopher Tolkien, his son's favorite bits, basically. Yeah. It's, it's fanfic by, yeah. his, by his son. Yes, you yes. Know, in, in a sense. And, I mean, it's all Tolkien's words, but it's the compilation by his son. So mm. just because it departs from that version doesn't mean that the, it's departing from Tolkien. The spirit is there and the essence I think is throughout it. It's not a perfect series by any means. There are things yeah. I would change. Uh, Harfoot's for one, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, it, it, you know, overall I'm very positive about it. Yeah. One, uh, one thing that got me now, all right, here's a, 
another uh, question that's being debated uh, about a particular character. I don't know how much I can say, so but I'll drop some hints and I think you'll get what I'm talking about here. Yep. So, I, well, I can say the stranger. Let's go. You know who the stranger is, yes. obviously. So uh, now the clues they dropped at the very end in the last episode uh, yeah. seem to indicate the stranger is going to be a character who's very familiar to us in the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I think I've read on Discord that you're not entirely sold on that yet. Is this one big misdirection? Yes. Or or are they actually just going to bring this character in? What What are your thoughts on that? I am 100% convi- percent convinced it is not whatever who everyone says they think it is. So this character, according to the, the appendices, does, does not enter into the story until the third age of Middle Earth. So well outside right. the scope of the this story takes place in the second age, which is thousands yes. of years. Okay. Mm. Um, and... Now there are others. I don't know. I kind of yes. just want to come out and say it. There are other people <laughs> related to this person who of do show type. up. Yeah, yeah who yes. do show up in this time period, and yeah. a lot of the factors that they mention, including things like going into the east, are connected mm. to this other character. And there's just because this this character says something that is very similar to what this other person says at another point. I'm sorry if it's confusing. Um, That's all right. (laughs) I'm trying not to spoil anyone. Um, But just because they say something that's very similar, you know, people who hang out together have say similar things together. Uh, I mean, not to put a too fine a point on it. I've known Dominicans who say similar things as other Dominicans. Shall we say they're in the same (laughs) order and they Mm -hmm. have some of the same thoughts and beliefs. So that's, that's how I look at it. I'm, I'm really convinced it is not who people think it is. Right. I personally love that you're struggling to tell this without spoiling it, by the way. You did really well there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's and, really hard work. <laughs> yeah. There are probably people who are listening who are screaming, going, just say who it is. Come on. <laughs> yeah. People in the know. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually found that scene with the stranger at the end, so, you know, before, I'll just say before the adventure, I hope that's not too much, that yeah. uh, I felt, I actually got quite emotional, actually. Uh, first of all, I think it could be that character, but at least the callback to particular lines of that character said i i was uh, i was like wow this this just feels like lord of the rings it really brought me into it right right yeah and, and the fact that people were getting kind of getting mad and critical of rings of power because of what they assume yeah. <laughs> they've, yeah. they've done that's what kind of gets me is the this the, yeah. you're, you're you're getting mad based on an assumption but i yes i, I really uh, that character is very interesting to me because it's a wide open book. I mean, there's a, there's still so much that we don't know. And yeah, right that's down, right. Yes. Right down to the name. Um, mm-hmm. That, and what, what are they doing? It seems what, it seems so disconnected from everything else. And yes. And so I'm kind of curious where they're going to go with that. And, you know, hopefully they're not just dropping it, you know, yeah, I, I really hope there's a grand plan as well. Yeah, yeah they're not just yes. heading off into the sunset or the sunrise yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. and never see them again. Like, no, 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 we need to yeah. s- see that again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and so, just one fun fact: I'm not sure if you're aware of this. So, was it Charlie Vickers who plays Hallbrand? Is that right? Yes, that's what we'll call him. Yes. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> did you know he's Australian? I didn't, although I should have known. Yeah. I saw him in a TV interview, but he was on like Zoom or something, so I right. couldn't catch the accent. Yeah, where's he from? Yeah, I was a uh, yeah. So I was surprised. I was reading a, an article uh, in an Australian paper that, that was interviewing. So apparently, he was born right here in Victoria in oh, St wow. Kilda. So that's about maybe thirty five minutes from here. Wow. Uh, and then moved to Geelong, and then uh, I didn't. I think he hadn't intended to be an actor, but then the acting picked up, and he. And he, I think it was even he was shocked to find himself getting to Rings of Power, like finding, you know, being, um, being hired for that. So, yeah, but good choice. I think he's done yeah. really well. And uh, yeah, and especially for what he is going to have to do in future seasons. We'll just say that. I, I have to tell you, I kind of love what they've done. Me too. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, how do I say it? Uh, it, 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 it adds a new dimension to, yes. to a, something that. Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, we're going to struggle with this part. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll I'll say this, there was one part where uh, this isn't a spoiler. He was talking with Galadriel, I'll just say that. Yep. In the final episode, and there was a stunning image. Yes. In a reflection of water. And yes. that's all I'll say. Yep. And that that I was almost jumping out of my seat with excitement with that for that part. <laughs> Does yep. not that 
Did that not remind you of Galadriel in the water with you know, looking to the Ab- water with Frodo? You know, absolutely 100%. Even yeah. there was a, a line from that scene, yes, I wouldn't say anything else, yes, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> and that's probably what had me jumping out of my seat the most. It was brilliant, right. yeah. All right, so I have a here's the first AMA question for you, okay? You can take a, you can go as long or as short as you want with this. If you had to go on an adventure, Dom, which hobbit would you take with you? Oh, that's ooh, that's good. I, I mean, I almost want to say Mary, Mary or Pippin because they're fun. Um, I think I'd take Sam. I mean, mm. you, A, he knows how to cook, you know, and he knows how to yeah, cook when yeah, you're out camping. Important. Yeah. He's got the conies yeah. and the taters, you know, I mean, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, and he's loyal and he'll carry the gear. <laughs> That's right. Well, he'll even carry you if he has to. I mean, that's it. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's and, it. He'll carry the person, yeah. And he'll fight the spiders for you because I hate spiders. That's right. So that's good. I'm happy for you. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Yeah. Very good. All right, so um, let's uh, let's roll on. Let's talk about um, one of the flagship shows of this uh, of this network is Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World. Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about what's been happening lately with, with Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World. Well, as we mentioned, we've been doing a lot of video with the mm-hmm. with that show, and we've been doing a lot of really great video. Uh, we have these folks at um, uh, the uh, John and Jessica Byers at um, Oasis Studio Seven. They came to right. us, and they they you know they offered and to help us with doing videos for the show, and they do this great animation work. And what they a lot yes, of times what yeah. they do is they they illustrate what Jimmy is saying, uh, putting it on screen. Like I. I when we did the mystery of inflation and, you know, Jimmy used some of these examples, he's, and, you know, he describes it and he describes it well, but when they animate it and they put, you know, coins on the screen and they go in from left to right and that sort of thing, (laughs) different buckets or whatever it was, it, it's so much, it elevates it so much more. And so, and it's fun. Yes. Yeah. It's so great to have, to have more video, uh, on that and, um, and have them doing it because they're doing such a great job. Yeah, the uh, the episode I really enjoyed the most. I don't know if it'd be everyone's favorite episode, but I actually really enjoyed the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, earlier in the year. Uh-huh. And I know the sequel came out, and I haven't listened to that one yet. And I am actually really looking forward to that. Uh, when when he said when he said in that first episode, and did you know there was a second Cuban Missile Crisis? I, I said, what? Really? What? <laughs> and I haven't Googled it as well. I oh, could good. have, but I haven't. Yeah, good for you. Uh, the yes. the second secret Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. That's- yes, that's right. Uh, that's the you know there are some shows right where jimmy says oh it, we're talking about bigfoot and i'm like oh bigfoot i know that that's really cool can't wait to listen but sometimes it's we're talking about this thing you've never heard of mm. i almost i am, almost enjoy those even more because because yes. i'd never heard of this i mean we've had some mm-hmm. really great ones like that uh lately and coming up um like we have a two-parter on the Loch Ness monster coming up in december and oh that should be good yeah <laughs> that, that, that we recorded that um uh, last week, I think it was yeah. a very a lot of fun. That's really good. A lot of Scottish names. Uh, so I apologize <laughs> in advance to all the Scots <laughs> for, for my pronunciation. Um, but things like Spring Jack, which, uh, yes, you know, a, a 19th century English uh, strange Batman like figure, you know, so bizarre, wasn't it? That one, <laughs> it was so weird, but it really cool and uh yeah. the spoon bending one was really you know wild too um we, we are getting back to we're going to be doing some more ufo related ones because i really love doing ufo ones They're so great. I'm, I'm excited yep. by that um uh, but yeah it, it's it, it's it's very interesting the the breadth of topics that we really cover and and the interest people show and all the time we hear people say, I didn't think I'd be interested in in that, but I get started listening and I love it. And I just hear that draws all, you in all mm. the time. Jimmy's a good storyteller. Mm. And that's what yes. really is, makes the difference is he, he always, he makes every, every episode, no matter the topic into a really good story. Yeah. And, and what I like is uh, that he breaks it right down. So with, so I'd been aware of the Cuban Missile Crisis. I remember doing it in, I think it was year 10 high school a long time ago. Yeah. So I was you know, pretty kind of aware of what of the broad story. But the way that he went into, for example, there were three times in one day where we almost had a nuclear disaster. Mm-hmm. You know, or, you know, and you think just how close we were to Armageddon, which is... You know, which is amazingly you know, scary, but, um, you know, I mean, we're here still, which is great. But, um, yep. but for him to break it down in that way, just the way he makes it so dramatic, you know, uh, and leaves you one, you know, the, it was a two parter, I think that one. So yep. the hook was, was great. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the way he did that. So I am looking forward to that 
second secret one. Did did he by any chance say, um, you know, the second uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, this time it's personal? Did he mention that at all? Why would he like the second Cuban Missile Crisis part? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I always love that. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, any other updates about that one before we uh, before I throw an AMA question at you? Uh, n- no, not really. I mean, we've just uh, one of the things I like. I love about it is when I can bring my my wife and my daughter in. They often yes. record some of the uh, female voices that we that we have. We often have long quotations from documents or books or that sort of thing. And we have people, you know, we, so we read those, and I read a lot of them. But uh, when it's w- women, so we have uh, my wife and my daughter Isabella, who my, who's uh, she's sixteen, and we did the Cabejo two parter, and when my daughter was reading the 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 uh, quote from one of the visionaries, when she was seeing the horrors that was being prophesied mm-hmm. and shown to her, and like she cries out in horror, I, I was like, I was phys- you know emotionally affected by it. She she's a yeah. good actress, I think, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of fun um, to have them part of it. It's it's really nice to to do that. Um, yeah, definitely. The variety of voices helps a lot. And, and just on the, you were talking before about reading Scottish names. Uh, it just re- you made me remember that when Lino, Caroline, and I had to read just a couple of short paragraphs for the Drop Bear episode, there wasn't a lot. Uh, behind the scenes, we re recorded those so many times because we kept making so many mistakes. So I keep, I often wonder when you have to do your reading parts, you know, how you, do you get through it all in one take or do you have oh. to, do you find yourself dropping, you know, words and lines here and there? Uh, there were, you know, we we've kind of gotten yeah pretty good at it, but in some of yeah. these ones, like this last one with all the Scottish names, I had <laughs> yeah. to stop and redo quite a bit. Jimmy's better sure. at at the names, I'm, but you know the, the the great thing is is the buyers are so good at their editing, it's you don't even notice the, you know the yeah. the edits. But um in, but yeah, we often have to go back and uh, redo the names, and um, uh, Jimmy's good because he often will. Uh, set it up so that he says difficult names or words before I have to. So he's being very yeah. generous to me so that I'm not having to figure these out as we go. Uh, so and we try to make sure that w- whether we know how to actually say it or not, we're both saying it the same way. <laughs> yeah. We're both wrong. We're both right. But- yeah. Right. And you're just making me think I'm going to ma- appeal to all the listeners again to increase their pledges so we have enough money to start having an SQPN outtakes reel of, of all those. Yeah. <laughs> the buyers did say that they were keeping it a, a blooper reel. So we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Fantastic. That's that's all we want to say. Yeah. So uh, here's, here's an AMA question for you. Of all the unsolved mysteries Jimmy has covered so far, which one do you hope will be resolved in your lifetime? Oh, skinwalker ranch no question oh yes <laughs> uh, yeah. that's it's still my favorite episode i think uh because it's the weirdest creepiest uh potentially the most groundbreaking you know if yeah if, and, and the hardest to explain there's just so much weird stuff that it's hard to it would be it's it's hard to come up with a natural explanation for any of it um yeah, and I've I've watched the Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch show that's on the History Channel here on yep. our cable, and um, I I just yeah, that's the one. That's the one I want. So, that's a, uh, that's a great one. I agree. Yeah, yeah, definitely, that's a great one. Yep, followed closely by, of course, uh, the Australian mystery of um of what uh, what was he? What did they call him? The, the, the Summerton Man. The Summerton no, Man. That's, that's right. Yeah, which they've solved, right? That's right. Yeah, basically they've solved. I think there are some other details to fill in, but uh, yeah. the biggest revelation is he's not related to. Uh, and I can't remember the names, but the woman who they originally, he was supposed to be her father, but that didn't end up being the case, which was, I mean, the way they talked it up, it sounded like that was going to be, that was was the deal, but wow. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I think there's some other things to fill in, but, uh, uh, is, uh, has Jimmy thought, I don't know if you've spoken about this, but is, cause I think Jimmy was convinced he was a spy at one point. Has Jimmy changed his mind? Do you think, or is he? Um, is he still convinced he's a spy? I don't think he was convinced, but I think he said that was a strong possibility based on sure. a lot of the details, the cutting out of the labels from the clothing and mm-hmm. um, the origin of some of the stuff from overseas. And, and some of his behaviors are classic spy, spy craft. So I think, I think it's still up there. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that it's still a spy. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, good answer, by the way. Skinwalker Ranch, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, American Catholic History, another great show on the network. Um, how how's it going? Um, uh, what's the what are the latest updates there? And can you reveal anything that might be coming up soon? 
Yeah, so uh, Tom and Noel Crow are hosting that, and that has been wildly successful. People love it, and mm-hmm. I love that it it really delves into historical things that, like especially areas again I'd never known about. Just people, amazing people, sort of mm-hmm. lost to uh, you know, to our to our, the past, who did amazing things, and they should be remembered and known. Um, yeah. and, and they even cover some interesting uh, things that. Uh, that people know about, but in, in new ways. So for example, we, we recently had um, an episode on doc holiday from the, uh, yep. the, from the okay corral, you know, uh, tomb, the movie tombstone. Well, it turns out that um, he was very Catholic friendly. He had a, ah. a long time, like a lifelong uh, sort of love crush, you know, affection with his cousin, uh, I'm not sure how close of a cousin was like, but, but his cousin, things were different then. And she was Catholic. <laughs> and in fact, she yeah. eventually became a nun. She was a religious. Ah. And at the end of his life, there is some thought that he might have converted, uh, you know, to, to become Catholic, which is interesting. So, you know, Doc Holliday is a famous, you know, old West gunslinger uh, in case people aren't aware. Uh, yeah. But, yep. but uh, this past Monday, as as people are listening to the show, uh, the new episode was is about um, a fictional character, Father Mulcahy from the TV show MASH, which mm-hmm. was one of the longest running and most popular TV shows ever uh, yep. about uh, the, the Korean War and the uh, mobile hos- army hospital unit in, in Korea. And the character of Father Mulcahy is one of the most influential TV priests ever. Uh, For sure, yeah. They talk about how his influence, and even you know, some people, some priests trace their vocation to Father Mulcahy. Uh, so, ah. and the actor William Christopher was not himself Catholic, but his mm-hmm. wife was, and he was very respectful and always endeavored to be the best Catholic priest on TV that he could be. So, this so some really great stories like that uh, that they've been doing. Um, coming up, the things like uh, Halloween's right around the corner. Uh, so yep. we got Edgar Allan Poe. They're doing nice. an episode on, the, on him. Um, in the future, Buffalo Bill Cody, the La Leche Shrine, um, and then Paul Revere's grandson, and then some other names. I don't know who they are, like uh, sort of yep. Lucy Burns and Pierce Butler, uh, who I'm sure when I finally hear their stories, I'm going to be blown away because that's yeah. been the case so far. Yeah, I think Tom and Noel have been really good at at, at revealing details about these people, and I, I listen from time to time. Th- this year, I've been really bad with listening to podcasts, but I'm trying to, you know, trying to uh, hear you know bits and pieces where I can. But they reveal details about about these people that you, you know, that you're not aware of. I mean, there's the broad story that you you know in pop culture about some of these people, you know, especially like the actors, you know, the famous people and so on. But you never hear right. about their Catholicism at all, and they've done a really good job of of giving a, a great insight into their faith or their, their exploration of it. Right. And, and not everyone is, is a, is a saint. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people, mm-hmm. they, they, they've done bad things in their life. They're, they're regular f- people, but how does the, how does the, the Catholic faith, how does Catholicism get expressed in their life? And that's yes. important to know as well. Yeah. 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 It's good to know that um, they struggle just like we do. Isn't yeah, it? That's right. <laughs> it's, they're in it like the rest of us. Uh, all right. So here's my ask me anything question for you, Dob. Uh, are there any American Catholics who uh, have been profiled on the show who have personally inspired you? Oh, oh, I'm going to uh, quickly scroll through the list. I put you on the spot there. <laughs> that, that's a hard one because uh, there's yeah. a lot of them. Um, yes, there certainly are. So, uh, I I would say that early on, well, one of them that is actually interesting is they on their hundredth episode they profiled Noel Duby, and mm-hmm. he's actually Noel Noel's grandfather. And, yes, that's right. Yep, and it was an amazing story. He you know uh, his story of us. He was on uh, the beaches at Normandy on D Day and was mm-hmm. uh, you know on the those cliffs the that the Rangers had to scale and uh, in yeah. the face of German opposition. But he was also a deeply faithful man who, after the war, came home and built a shrine in his yard that became a pilgrimage site for people. And wow. it was I was like, wow, this was like a, just a regular guy and you know a, a, a normal person, not a star, not a you know, but who is kind of a hero and a deeply faithful man. And so I, I was kind of inspired by that one. I really liked that, that episode. 
Good answer. Good answer. I like that. <laughs> sounds amazing. Yeah. And for anyone who's listening, if you've never heard to heard or listened to American Catholic history, if you start now, there's a big archive of all these amazing people. Oh yeah. And you got, there's going to be so much inspiration from all these stories that you might hear. So um, I think a big thank you for them because I I I'd have to assume that there'd be a so much research that has to go into finding the details that they find. Yes. It can't be like, this isn't a 10 second job. We're talking about, it must take hours and hours, if not days and days to research each of these individuals. Tom says it takes him eight to 12 hours to write every script for a show mm. that's usually under 20 minutes long. So Correct. each episode's yeah. under 20 minutes. So, so yep. he puts a lot of effort in. And in fact, they've recently had to switch to going uh, every other week instead of weekly because mm -hmm. of the amount of uh, time it takes. And, you know, one of the, as I mentioned before, everyone on this network is a volunteer and Tom and Noel are volunteers as well. Recently we've, we've changed the relationship with it, with them so that they can start fundraising for themselves. Yep. So they're, they're looking for people to support their show specifically. And so I'm hoping yep. that they get the means by which they can make a go of it and really grow their show, get back to weekly and that sort of thing. So uh, definitely, yeah, it's a lot, they're putting a lot of work in and it's a great thing that they're doing. Yeah, really. Um, I mean, who knows how many lives have been touched, honestly, by by what they're doing. So oh, that's, yeah. that's been really good to see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, so um, let's move on to another show, one that's very close to your heart. Yeah. And that is Raising the Bets, a great show. Uh, this is your if you're a, if you're an ordinary Catholic person with a with a family or if just even if you're not, honestly, if you're just a person with a family or a person who's trying to get through all the everyday things of everyday life, this is the show for you. Dom, just tell us a bit about what it is, how it's going, um, and, and what you've gotten out of it as well. So this is a show I do with my wife, Melanie, and it is, um, uh, we talk about our, uh, what we've been doing with our kids, with our family, our, and, uh, our faith. Um, we talk about school. Our kids are homeschooled. So we talk about that. And Melanie homeschools all the kids. We talk about food that we've been cooking. We love to cook. We love to cook new, interesting recipes. But also we're having to cook for our kids. So how does that go with our kids? Uh, yeah. Melanie is a, you know, a, a voracious reader. She used to be an English professor before uh, mm -hmm. before she, uh, she had kids. And so uh, we talk about books. We talk about TV shows and movies we like. And then we, we always end the show by talking about um, usually about the homily we heard this past Sunday and, you know, mm -hmm. our reflections on it. And so it's a, it's a sort of show that just kind of, we explore what it means to be a, a Catholic family. And in a way, the whole, the idea of the show is to, was, to, was to kind of say there are people behind SQPN, you know, mm. and this is who they are, um, you know, and, and that's a, one way of doing that is to have a show like this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I love doing it with Melanie. It's it's a way for us to sit down together every week and uh, and, and chat, and and so that's really helpful that way too. Uh, to, to get us to sit, to sit down <laughs> together without the kids in the room and be able to talk. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, and no, I've I've got to say again, this is a show that um that I love listening to. Uh, just picking up, you know, some of the things that I can relate to in my own life, uh, and like I said, you know, hearing about you know, the people behind the network, I think is such an important thing too, so that people realize that, you know, we're not just doing this for whatever, we're doing this because it, it means something and we want to connect to the listeners. And I think it's good that you do that. Um, uh, what's been the response that you've had from listeners? Have you, have you had some feedback of people been saying things to you about the show? What, what comes up most often? It, it's kind of like what you said earlier, uh, Lindsay, which is uh, I often hear from people saying, wow, it's it's nice to hear about another family that is just a normal family, you know, and yeah. we, we have a lot of the similar struggles. Like our kids have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff they go through, like a lot of kids and uh, we, we mm. homeschool all of them. Um but our kids are in scouting. So we talk about scouts a lot. Um, all five of our kids are in scouts, uh, which is <laughs> interesting at times. Um, and you know, we, we, we take them on field trips. We go to museums, we do things with them and we just, we're real. Like we're, we we do not we're not hiding. We're not putting on airs. We're not, you know, trying to, I don't know, pretend something we're not, we're, we're just being mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, and, you know, recently a few weeks ago, uh, about a month ago now, I lost my dad. Um, he yeah. passed away at 89 years old. Um, and, uh, that night we recorded an episode. I'm not sure. I, I just, I had to, I had to do something, you know? And so we yeah. talked about stories about my dad and my dad had some mm -hmm. great stories and people really were really kind. And, um, they, they were saying one person wrote in and said, you talking about your dad and losing your dad helped me finally feel closure from when I lost my dad. And, wow. and so 
it, that really touched me and it really made it feel worthwhile to do it. So uh, it's a very personal show like that, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of fun and we we laugh a lot. And so it's, 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 we've been doing it. I can't believe we've been doing it almost um, two, two years, more than two years. I forget I what it is. Two to three years. It feels like, yeah, it feels yeah. like forever to Close, be honest now. Yeah. <laughs> closing on three years with the number of shows we've done last, last fall or last, fall my my time your your spring um mm -hmm. we had a, a major house flood our week yes, and we were yes. couldn't live in our house I was for three bring months that up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. and uh and so we we couldn't we managed to record a few times but we just um we, was, we were in rental housing and bad mm -hmm. bad sound and all sorts of stuff so <laughs> we tried to we tried to do record a, a bit but it was really nice to kind of get step away from all of that stress and to just kind of talk things out and have, you know, talk to, to the audience and that sort of stuff. And so that was a really helpful time for us to have that. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you to you and Melanie for your vulnerability as well. That honesty really, again, the people who are listening that you've already talked about what, how some people have reacted, who knows who you haven't heard from that has had a good reaction to it as well. Yeah. It's just, definitely. That's why we do this. Yeah. Yep. All right. So uh, now I've got two AMA questions. They're probably going to be really short ones, but uh, yep. first of all, uh, what is the funniest, strangest, most out there theological insight that any of your children have given you, have shared with you? <laughs> oh gosh. Just some really bad theology that's come out of any of your kids' mouth. Can you think oh, of anything? I'm trying to think. Um, oh, there was, um, oh, it just, well, I mean, the normal things that little kids sometimes say when, you know, that just yeah. are out there, like, you know, um, uh, daddy, when, when I'm old, you're going to be dead, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I'll pray for Thanks. you when you're dead. Thank yeah. you. I, think, I mean, Thanks, they, <laughs> this is when they were when they were little. You know, not not yeah, not yeah. when they're teenagers. That would just be creepier when they were teenagers. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of anything. I'd have to think more about it. Try to de delve into my my memory a little more. But that's about the the most I can come up with the, off the cuff. No, uh, fair enough. My mom always tells the story about when I was uh, when I was young. Um, she, I was a very apparently active child in church when I was, you know, under five years old. So she'd try and keep me distracted and quiet. And, uh, one time she pointed to, you know, the crucifix behind the, the altar and she said, look, look, you have to be quiet. There's Jesus on the cross. And apparently I shared out, no, 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 that's Jesus on an airplane. So, um, and, I, and that was quite loud. I think I embarrassed her, my poor mother. So right there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, um, she reminds me of that story often, and she tells it to everyone else to embarrass me now that I, I got her. So Very nice. she keeps me in my place that way. Very nice. Yeah, all right. Um, look, a show that's close to my heart and, and Lino and Caroline's. Um, and Jerry, I mean, it was great to have him back uh, yes. on the show recently as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is the Catholics of Oz and Let Science? Uh, uh, what's been happening? I mean, in terms of your insights, I, you know, I do the show, I can tell you things about it. But in terms <laughs> of from your perspective, <laughs> I mean, there's been lots of plenary council and everything. Um, how do you think that's all, all those topics are going? I got to tell you, the it was a great idea to do the the multiple episodes on the plenary council documents, because I, 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 I mean, maybe it's different in Australia, but I hadn't really seen anyone digging into them like you did uh, anywhere else. And th these were really important documents, um, mm. not just because, you know, there was always that surface level take that the news would have, like, oh, yep. the, the, they would look for the hot button issues that were involved in each one. And you went, you acknowledged it, but went beyond it. And I really was happy for that because I really think it's a service to folks to have you can read like you can read articles about things, but I'm not sure if every it's easy for everyone to absorb all that information, mm -hmm. especially when it's technical. But when people are sharing from the heart about these things and talking about them in depth, I think it has a, a deeper impact. So I was really pleased that you guys had done that and spent all that time doing th that on those documents. And I think it turned out really well. It's a real service to the church. Yeah, I, thanks for that. Because it was important for me that, uh, you know, these things come and go that, you know, there'll be a synod on synodality at some stage, you know, I think next year is when they're planning on starting it. You know, the church here had a plenary council. I'm sure the church in America has all kinds of gatherings and meetings, you know, but they, they fly by yep. unless we talk about them. And there's so much that's missed. I mean, how many Catholics for example, understand what Vatican II was all about, for example. It's the, you know, you know, most like most important council in recent history and that and we're living under its influence now. Uh, you know, all these things. I think it's really important that we we do speak and share uh, about the implications of these. You know, what are we actually being called to through these councils? 
how is the Holy Spirit moving our leaders to move us? That's you know, and our mission in the world. Um, so yeah, I, that was for me was is why it was important to at least attempt to break down those documents. I I left out lots. There was so much in there, but <laughs> yeah. I tried to draw the main themes and ideas at least anyway. And I think what's great is, is that you do that in the context of fun, interesting conversation among friends where that we also talk about fun science things and fun entertainment things, because yeah. I don't think people necessarily, a lot of people who would benefit wouldn't necessarily listen to a podcast that was very clearly a theological discussion. You know, sure. the, yeah. this podcast is about discussing church documents. Yay. No, hey. yeah, I mean, some people will listen, but, but you, I think you get more people if you take, break it down into chunks like you did and, and couch it in terms of like, and we're also talking about other fun things too. And not that it isn't fun, but you know, it's more serious. I, I'm really glad that you, that you did it in the way you did it because it, it really brings it to a new audience, uh, which I think is really good. Yeah. And I, I know that, um, you know, when it, we're not just an Australian audience, so obviously with this show, you know, um, SQPN is, you know, primarily American network and there are others around the world, but I think it's good for uh, maybe for others to compare their experience. Maybe there's an insight Yep. You know, we're, we're, we're one church at the end of the day, so maybe there's an insight happening in one part of the church that's important for them to hear. But also for me too, when I hear what's happening in the church in other parts of the world, there are bits that are, you know, that are influential and important to me too. We're, we're one church under Christ. So how is Christ speaking to this part of the world and that part of the world? And we all benefit from that, I think. I love the insight I get into your culture. You know, it's, I think it's easy for us to, for, to kind of think, we're both speaking English. We, you know, we both look a lot alike or that sort of thing. And yeah. our, our, you know, we have lots of similar entertainment and the way we live is similar. We think we're the same, but we're really different cultures as different as, you know, we are from, you know, Aust uh, uh, Austrians or F Germans or, you know, sure. or even, you know, uh, Cong Congolese, you know, we're very mm -hmm. different peoples, even, even so we're so alike. And your insights into the, like, for example, the documents on enculturation of the liturgy mm -hmm. is a very different take than you often hear in American circles. And, like, and I think that broadens our mind. I think it's very mm -hmm. easy to, for, to think that the churches are, is, it, that everyone in the church experiences their faith the way we do. But they don't. And we're a very large church and yes. <laughs> our experience is not universal. Our individual, you know, our local experience, our national experience even uh, is not universal. And I think that's one of the great benefits of, of hearing from your perspective. Yeah, I, I think one of my biggest learnings this year uh, has been because I've been a bit focused on mission, I guess. But what, and as you just said, one of one of my biggest learnings um, through and linking to what you said is, uh, I think we're all trying to work out how can we be disciples in our context. Yes. Well, you know, how how does the Holy Spirit want us to move so that we can be evangelizers in the place that we're that we've been placed in where we are. Mm. It's a um yeah, and there's that, so much discernment needs to go on, and I, I think the discernment's always ongoing because our our world is changing so quickly, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. How does the gospel reach out to you know people that are not normally in our experience as well? I guess. Right. Yeah. So, and and that's why it was important for me to throw this to Lino and Caroline where possible because you know they're lay people like I am, and for them, I think to to have other lay people respond to what these documents were saying, I think was important too, so that we could hear the insights of you know, of others who haven't done the, the, the research and the, and the reading of it as well. Yeah. Um, so that people who listen can link their experiences to that too. And they don't work in the church. You know, they, they're not professional Catholics in a sense. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of a professional Catholic too, in the sense that you're a teacher and you teach, yep. you know, theology, uh, but they're just regular folk. And it's, it's important to hear their perspective and not always hear yes. the commentary of the, of professional people, on these things, theologians or your journalists or, you know, people who work for dioceses, uh, but to hear perspective of people who just like regular folk in the pew. And that's uh, very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously the offshoot of our show is, uh, is less science. So we get Caroline's science segment. We we've made another show as well, which is really good. Uh, I've had to carry the, that with Lido a little bit recently, so <laughs> doing my best. <laughs> uh, so Caroline is the scientist. I'm more the science enthusiast, so that's what I've been approaching it from. Yep. And um, and sticking to space science, which is uh, the the one I have a lot of fun with. Um, we had an episode on chewing as well, which was interesting too. It was fun to do research <laughs> on that. Just something out of left field. <laughs> that was that was cool. And well, that's the thing is it's it's not like you guys do a lot of science. 
but there's so much more that you can do. Like there was the uh, the dinosaur tree and yes, uh, you know other stuff like that, which is great. And so by by having it as a let science, it it opens the door to whatever interests you at the time. Um, but I I, I would I would always hear these science segments, and I was thinking we really need to get this out to a broader audience. I think there's more people would would enjoy this. And how mm. do we do that? And one of the ways that a lot of networks a lot of shows do is they they break out parts of their show and get them out there separately they with like clips yep. on youtube or that sort of stuff and i thought so this if with a little judicious editing i could take this science segment and very quickly make a show out of it and that will reach another audience of people who are looking for science content and maybe that would bring them to back to catholics of oz and other shows on the starquest network so uh, and I think it's been fantastic. It's been it, really great to do. And there's been really good uh, responses to it as well. So it, it's kind of fun to see how that show has been growing uh, as well over time. Um, and yes. It's yeah. a way of where we make we, we make every dollar work twice. <laughs> where we yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Use our yeah. content as much as we can. For sure. I've loved seeing people talk about it on Discord. <laughs> Sometimes the discussions oh, wow. go way above my head. I have yes. no idea what they're talking about, but I love that it generates something at least anyway. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of great science. The people who are deeply into science uh, oh, yes. on our Discord in that channel. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. So my combined Catholic, Catholics of Oz Let's Science question for you is this. Yeah, and, and I've heard you speak about Australian animals before. So um, yes. if you had to pick a native Australian animal as a pet, which one would you choose? <laughs> Oh man, they, they're all so deadly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, you know, I, the the one that I've had the most experience with is the budgie. Uh, the bird. Oh, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're cute little. I've had them literally eating out of my hand at the uh, our local mm -hmm. zoo. Um, yeah. Uh, but you know, I I, I kind of love koalas. You know, just <laughs> you know they're not quite dro the drop bear but uh you know they're, yep. they're they're so cute um so um they are i i i'll have to be the the, the cliche just say koala uh i guess it goes yep. that yeah and you know what that i mean they are supremely lazy animals that yes. let's just get to it and if you go and see them in an australian zoo, well any zoo to be honest so they'll only be awake for maybe two to three hours a day if you're lucky to see that otherwise yeah. they're just sleeping the whole time easy to take or care of then <laughs> yeah yeah exactly right yeah yeah or as i call it living the good life I mean, that's the really good what they're doing so yeah <laughs> i mean i was Have tempted to go to sleep yeah, yeah i was tempted to say emu because of the great emu war but uh well <laughs> right <laughs> that would be exciting for sure <laughs> yeah yeah uh, we only I, I remember when my friends and i learned you know in the last five to ten years how deadly the cassowary is i don't know if you've heard of that it's <laughs> yes. a, yeah it's that's a dinosaur with that's a bird basically <laughs> yes so, yeah, right yeah yeah it looks friendly but they have to keep it behind a cage for a reason yeah oh man <laughs> uh yeah all right well um playstation portable that's just been going on for forever hasn't it it is yeah. one it's the oldest show on the network it's been going on yeah. it's my it's one of the oldest podcasts period out there i mean it is it's the old one of the oldest the probably the oldest catholic prayer podcast um yes it so uh jeff vista has been doing it for at this point i think 17 years wow it, so that's how people what it is so if, in case you aren't familiar pray station yep. portable is the liturgy of the hours the church's liturgy of the hours sometimes called the divine office and it's five different prayer opportunities during the day there's morning prayer uh office of readings midday prayer evening prayer night prayer and every day there's five of these uh all, all five of these and uh in it's psalms and readings and prayers and He's been going for all this time, and we have a lot of people. In fact, it's kind of funny. There's a lot of people who listen to PlayStation Portable who don't listen to anything else on the network. Wow, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yep. Which is always my – I always want to like kind of like, hey, everybody, come over here, check this stuff out. This is kind of good yep. too. Uh, and we occasionally get people uh, who come over and say, wow, I didn't realize. Um, <laughs> but it's such a great service to the church and to, to help people pray. Um, it's fantastic. P people, A lot of people, this is their opportunity to pray in the car, or while they're making dinner and that sort of thing. It's really mm -hmm. fantastic. And that's it. It's the accessibility of it, is it? You can listen to it anywhere, basically, anywhere where you've got a bit of time and space. You might be doing something else, but you've got it there. And, and you just, the liturgy hours, you just pick up insights 
from time to time. The, it's really good in that way. So, uh, yeah. and, and you know, thank you to him for doing it. It's a labor of love, 17 years. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, may it continue forever and ever. <laughs> yeah, and it's so complex good. because, yeah. you know, yeah. he's got to get the right, like, the, the, it's it's a cycle, but the cycle yeah. doesn't match up to the same day every every mm-hmm. year. So you've, he's constantly having to get them out there, you know, in the, on the right days, the right times. And also dealing with time zones because – People yes. in, you know, like, like, like us, we're in two to two different days right now. And so yep. he's got to make sure that you have your prayers at the right, you know, in, in, in well in advance. So then I have my right prayers. So yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's a lot yeah. of labor. Yeah. All right. So my question for you from this is what's your go-to prayer, Dom, at any time when you need it, you feel like I need to pray right now, what's your go-to? What would you do? Oh, so often I pray the St. Michael prayer. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, just the, the, the life and times we live in, it's just, sometimes I feel like I need St. Michael to, to cast <laughs> Satan into hell <laughs> where, wherever I am. Um, I mean, I, I love St. Michael anyway, just I, as, ever since I was a kid, you know, a saint with a sword was always, uh, you know, angel with a sword. It's so exciting. So to Lord me. of the Rings, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, I would say if there was one prayer, I was my go-to, it would be the St. Michael prayer. Yeah, good choice. Um, that's always recited at the end of mass in my parish. I think that's a tradition in a lot of places. Isn't oh it? wow, yeah, it's an yeah. older tradition. Well, uh, it's kind of faded a bit, but I, I, it, it's something that we should probably more more of us should bring back. Um, it's yeah. a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's move on to the secrets of series. Uh, these are this yes. is the real pop culture stuff that goes on at SQPN, the intersection of faith and culture. Yep. Uh, so let's get to the secrets of Doctor Who. Now, I'm a bit out of touch with Doctor Who, but I do know there's something big coming up. Uh, yes. There's a there's a big anniversary episode, I think, coming up, and I think it's Jodie Whittaker's last episode. Am I correct about that? Right. So as we record, that's yep. two days away. So as everyone is oh, listening, is really? yes, they've already, it's already out. So it's the- regen- Oh, I thought it was months. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the amazing thing. So um, this oh, well. November marks the- I, I keep mixing them up. I think this November marks the yep. 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. No. Yes. Yes. No. Or is that I next year? Oh, no, that's the 100th anniversary of the BBC. So there's, there's the two uh-huh, anniversaries. Yep. And I think next year yep. is the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who uh, because the 50th was 2013. So that would make sense. So it's the 100th yep. anniversary of, of uh, the BBC. And so they're having all these specials. And so they're the, they have the regeneration special of, so it's mm-hmm. the Jodie Whittaker's last episode as the 13th Doctor. And we have the 14th doctor uh, will be revealed. We already know that the, um, the actress Sh- Shuji Gatwa, uh, who's okay. going to be take, taking, over, taking her place. And so, yeah, that's big change. We're getting um, uh, the old showrunner back um, who, who brought, um, Doctor Who, who out with of, David Tennant was he was with David Tennant the this yeah, showrunner it's um, come back yeah oh my gosh I can't I can't believe I, can't, I my my mind is blanked on his name um, sorry uh, everyone's shouting it at their phones right now I'm yeah sure. it's it's not Moffat it's the one before him not Russell T, Russell T it, Davies no, Russell T Davies that the you. one yeah, yeah yeah and he's coming back so that'll be an interesting spring his sensibility mm-hmm. especially. 10 years later, you know, it's been 10 years since. And so how has he changed his approach to Dr. Who and all that sort of thing? So it'll be interesting to see him come back um, and to see what new stuff. Now you mentioned David Tennant, there is going to be a series of specials between now and the 60th anniversary next year that will feature Mm -hmm. some of the doctors from previous times. So there's a David Tennant special for sure, where he's going to be with Catherine Tate in uh, one of my favorite, um, companions uh, uh, yes. Donna's dad Wilf uh, was one of my favorites and um, <laughs> yep. and uh, Bernard Cribbins played him and he recently died may he rest in peace mm-hmm. and um, I so and then there's rumors that there's going to be maybe a Matt Smith maybe ah. uh, an Eccleston uh, would be back Chris Ooh, Eccleston. that would be interesting yeah it would, it would be a yes. big deal because he left under yes. bad you know some, some bad feelings but That's he's right. recently talked about how people have apologized and he's feeling mm-hmm. more reconciled with Doctor Who. So that would be awesome to have to have it would back. be. Yes. So uh, but yeah, so that's what's that's the the big thing in, in Doctor Who. And so we've been talking a lot about that. There haven't been a lot of new episodes lately. So we've been we've been talking a lot of classic who and, you know, going yep. through some of the new who as well. 
Yeah, excellent. How's it? Um, are, are you um, d- discovering Classic Who as you go with this show? Like, yes. Are you re- uh, watching for the first time? Or yes. So I'd already seen the new the new Doctor Who. Everything since two thousand five. So uh, Doctor Who aired from nineteen sixty three to nineteen eighty nine, fairly continuously, and then was canceled until two thousand five. It came back with a really bad American TV movie, made for TV movie <laughs> in the middle. Uh, <laughs> but the um, so, but I never watched Classic Who when I was a kid. So I, so Jimmy and Father Corey, they're old hands at, at Doctor Who, uh, but I'm discovering it new as we go along. And so it's fun yeah. to, to kind of be able to give my perspective as newly watching this, this sort of thing. Um, so we're doing that. And we're also listening to um, Big Finish audio plays, Big Finish audio yep. stories. So they're, re- they're audio stories that you can download like a podcast. And the ones we listen to feature all, a lot of the original uh, actors. So whether it's David Tennant and we recently did one that features uh, Alex Kingston and Michelle Gomez as River Song and Missy together. Yeah. Wow. Oh, what a combination that would be. Yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. That was so much fun. I'll check that out. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, so I'm, we're talking about classic Doctor Who and we're, we're doing it in a cycle. So we're not like just slogging through the sixties to the seventies. You know, we're going first, second, first doctor, second doctor, third doctor, you know, kind of going in a cycle there. So, uh, make it interesting. Yeah, great. And it does actually make it interesting that you do it that way. Again, I've I've been trying to listen to episodes where I can. So my big yeah. thing is I'm trying to write a master's essay at the moment. And that's just what's taken my whole life over. <laughs> right, but, uh, right. Yeah, I do. I do jump in every now and then. Uh, but here's my question for you today, Dom. If you could pick the actor or actress who plays a future doctor, who would it be? Oh, we we talked about this not long ago. And... Um... One of the actors I mentioned at the time, who I think would be very interesting, is Idris Elba. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought, I think he would be, like, he's often been talked about as a, as a Bond, a James Bond. Uh, That's right. Yes. Future. And I think he'd be interesting as a doctor. Um, I, I don't know if that, you know, if it would be the, if he'd do the best, but I think he's a, he's an interesting actor and I'd be curious to see how he would do as the doctor. He'd certainly enjoy it, I think, if he, if oh, he did yeah. that. Yeah. And he's, yes, he, yeah. He, he's, he can be very serious, but he can also be very playful, you know, in yes. his roles. So uh, it would be fun to see. I mean, he was on the American version of The Office, you know, for a couple mm-hmm. episodes or at least one episode and was hilarious in that. So it would be interesting. <laughs> uh, so uh, that, that would be my pick, I think. Yeah. I don't know why, but um, it always pops into my head. I have no reasons for this, but when I think of a future doctor, I think of Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I think that would be interesting. Oh. I have no idea why though. Like, I just think he'd bring, bring something interesting to it though. Yeah. He's a, you know, he's a multi-role kind of person as well. I just wonder. Yeah. That and then a bit of Australian flair. So yeah. Maybe bring a sort of an action flair to it too. You know, more. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, because he can also be quite a larrikin, like an Aussie, typical Aussie larrikin as well. So yeah. he's got the comedic side, but then he's got the serious and the action, and everything, you know, everything else that he does. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, now that but would I be better get Wolverine out of my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's, uh, oh, so now this is a, now it's not a new show, but it's a relatively new show. I don't think we, yeah. I'm not sure if we talked about it last year, but The Secrets of Stargate, I'm, I'm not sure if we talked about it last time you are on, but it's been going pretty strong. Yes. Um, it's, it, it's, I find this a very comedic show when I listen to it because there's so much laughter and, and so many great jokes that go on. Um, but uh, they're doing really well. I, I really enjoy their commentary and oh, looking yeah. through old episodes that are you know, you know, really, really old now. Um, why did The Secrets of Stargate come about in the first place? You know, we've been talking about for ages how all of us are big Stargate fans. Stargate SG-1 mm. and Stargate Atlantis. Uh, Stargate Universe was a, was a brief third uh, show of the franchise that didn't last too long, but so and many left of us, us hanging, I should say. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, bring back Stargate, um, yeah. Yeah, which may happen actually. There's, there's lots mm-hmm. of talk about that, but um, that actually was one of the reasons we brought it back. Cause there had been so much talk by the previous show creators uh, that, Stargate might be coming back. Be like, you know, this is might be the time to start talking about it. And uh, Stargate is a great franchise. The uh, Stargate SG One had like eleven seasons. It was on for a long time. Mm. Uh, Stargate Atlantis had, I think, seven seasons. And so it was. It was a long lived show with lots of content. And the episodes themselves were of the a particular style of the nineties, which was yes. you know, in the early two thousands. They weren't yep. heavy. They weren't dark. They tended to be fun and light 
Um, mm-hmm. They didn't take themselves too seriously, but yet dealt with serious topics at times. Um, yeah. And it was so well written and well acted. All, all of the actors were fun, especially Richard Dean Anderson was always oh, for sure. was just, yes. uh, always hilarious. And what I love about the 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 podcast is so we got Father Corey and Lisa Jones and Victor Lambs. Victor is 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 very funny. I mean, he does uh, mm-hmm. that show he in is so funny. <laughs> Secrets of Tech with me, and yeah, he's yeah. very funny. And you know, Father Corey is 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 funny. Lisa is a huge Stargate fan with her whole family, mm-hmm. uh, her husband, yeah. her kids. They're all like she talks about how they have lines from the show as like family lingo, like you know, like when, <laughs> they, when they take the dog for a walk and they they use a line from the show to describe how it went. You know that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 very funny and. So uh, it's a, and it's a great and not a long show, you know, they usually 35, 40 minutes, um, mm-hmm. and, but it's really a lot of fun. And I've been watching Stargate SG one again, as they, I'm, a, I'm like, I try to stay a few episodes ahead uh, as mm-hmm. uh, rewatching it as they're recording. Um, and it's just so much fun to rediscover this great show. It's such a, it's such a fantastic show. Yeah, uh, so uh, the streaming services in Australia, I, I don't know which one it is, but none of the ones I have have uh, Stargate on them at the moment. I'm hoping Amazon at some point, because I think they have the rights to it now. They just so bought hoping, the rights, yeah. Yeah, so I'm hoping at some point they'll flood my Amazon account with SG-1 episodes. But oh, yeah. I have every now and then sort of found a way to watch an episode they might have talked about that really piqued my interest when they talk about a fun fact or something. Uh, yeah, oh, so yeah. it's been really good to hear that, yeah. And when, they, when there's a really, really bad episode... I feel like there's just less analysis of the episode. It's just humorous banter all the way through. Oh yeah. And I love that they do that. Yeah. So those are some yeah. of the best episodes of any of our shows when we have to talk about something that's really bad. Is it a clunker of some kind? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to throw this question to you. Can you think of a favorite supporting character? So not one of the main characters of any SG one series any, that, that was a favorite to you. Oh, I, I always go back to Dom DeLuise as Ergo. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> he like I always loved Dom DeLuise as a kid. I mean, not just because yeah. we share a name, but because he's just always so funny, <laughs> especially when he was in with Burt Reynolds in Cannonball Run. Yes. Uh, was it Cannonball Run he was in with? Yeah, I think he was in Cannonball Run with Burt Reynolds. Uh, anyway, um, he's just a funny, funny guy. And so in that episode, Ergo, I always remember that as just the uh, laughing hysterically throughout w- at, at him. Um, is so good. And his son, Peter was a director on many, many episodes of Stargate and directed right. that episode. So that was really kind of funny, <laughs> uh, in addition. So, um, yeah, yeah. Er- you, Ergo. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. You can tell for, as, as the viewer, how much fun, they must have had with the episode because it was a, such a funny one. Just that, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, just imagine having a guy like that in your head <laughs> all the time. <laughs> just, <laughs> yes. Hello in there. <laughs> yeah. Boring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. And I love the SG-1, I mean, all these Stargate issues, especially SG-1, how they could have a variety of genres in their shows too. Yes. It was just brilliant. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Speaking of another show that starts with oh, it starts with Star Secrets of Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> so um, now uh, I don't know how you guys keep up because there is so much Star Trek going. Unfortunately, right now it's all it's all one series after another. But there's a lot to keep up with now. Right. So uh, and, I, and I don't think in recent memory you've had a chance to bring out any of your episodes about previous uh, you know Trek incarnations. So briefly uh, between Strange New Worlds and uh, the, their first <laughs> season and the latest season of Star Trek Prodigy, we had like 3 weeks where we could get in a couple of a uh, classic Trek. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um and it, it's so broad like there's too many series to talk about just in modern Trek, but I guess yeah. what stood out for you as as being as as great classic Star Trek to you from the series that are that have been on offer in the last couple of years. I love Strange New Worlds, the 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 Captain Pike series because it's a real yeah. throwback to the original series. It's episodic. It doesn't mm-hmm. it has it has things that carry over from, you know, episode to episode a bit, but it's very yeah. much driven story of the week sort of sort of thing and uh, and I love Captain Pike. Just what a great oh, character. Sure. I, yeah. I I really enjoy seeing him and um and the, the, the crew, I, I really have enjoyed the crew from top to bottom. There was a really interesting uh, loss of one of the crew members that was unexpected yes. to me. Yeah. Uh, it was deeply affecting to me. I mean, Heartbreaking, it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, I was reading recently about the actress that plays the helmsman. Uh, yep. I don't remember the character name. But she suffered a, a devastating loss in her personal life of her husband uh. and talked about how 
uh, her castmates and the crew crewmates helped her through it, but also how the character and playing the character has helped her wow. in this time. And it's very interesting to see, and I'll be, I'll be very interested to see how that affects, because this was after season one and finished filming. So interesting to see how yeah. that, carries on into the second season for her. Uh, but I just, I, I've really enjoyed it. It's, it really has been for me, the best of the new Star Trek series. I'd agree. And I'd say now, look, some episodes are better than others, but yes. I personally feel there hasn't been a bad episode, if that makes sense. I, Not I, a I, I've, Yeah. No, I, I've generally enjoyed all of them. I haven't gone to one and said, Oh wow, this is this is as bad as Code of Honor. <laughs> so, I've got nothing like that, you know. <laughs> no angel ones here. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they've, yeah, they've clearly after it's taken decades, but the writers have learned their lessons in terms of getting a good first season up and running now. Yes, yeah. yes, um, yeah. And clearly, uh, Lower Deck stands out as a a great you know series yes. as well. Yeah. Lower Decks is very funny. Um, there's occasionally an episode we, when we used to have one where I felt like, uh, they, they took the humor mm. too far in the wrong direction. Maybe a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah. but in general, I really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's not for kids, even though it's animated. I mean, I really, we really yeah. have to emphasize that it's not really, it's mm-hmm. not meant for kids. There's stuff in it that is not kid appropriate, but, uh, you know, maybe older teens, yep. but it's very, it's very funny, but it's also really well written and it's really aimed at star trek fans like there's yes. so many in jokes so many easter yeah. eggs it's 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 really fun to to watch that yeah definitely um it's yeah it's been so entertaining and yeah there, like you said there's there's some humor in there because i've got a, a 13 year old my oldest son damien 13 will be 14 next year um in january so I'll pick an episode that he can watch that I yeah. know there's not going to be anything, you know, inappropriate in there. Um, or sometimes I'll just pick some scenes there, check this out, you know, because he's yeah. he, he's watched a bit of Star Trek with me in the past. So we have a bit of a laugh about that. I've got to say now, I know that it was a very divisive episode, but the recent one with Peanut Hamper. Yes. Um, so and there were some things in there, but there was one scene where I, I laughed out loud so much. It's where where he's uh, I think uh, I forgot the name of the. Uh, the one she falls in love with anyway, yeah. but they're flying together and he goes, Oh, peanut hamper. I love this moment so much. It just fills my heart with song. And she goes, sing for me, sing for me. And then, you know, like in the classic Disney episode where the music peaks and it's about to start. And then he's like, rah, rah, you know, he starts making bird noises. <laughs> he's a I bird. So he makes, he yeah, starts a cawing. Bird. Yeah. And she's I like, Oh my gosh, it. you was, scared me there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so That's right, yeah. I was laughing so hard. And Isabel's looking at me going, what's so funny. And I had to show her. Was, yeah, it was, that uh, was very that, funny. It, yeah. It, so unexpected and they got me that so so well played with that one <laughs> and can't go past the deep space nine episode and i hope i'm not oh, spoiling too much but yeah. i have to mention it can't go past just how brilliant that episode was i i yes. was drawn into the world of deep space nine i felt like i was watching an episode of that to it, be honest yes and having armin shimmerman and nana visitor yes you know yeah both they are playing their uh, characters again yeah it was fantastic uh yep Father Corey said that uh, from now on, whenever we have technical difficulties recording a podcast, uh, he's going to start saying, just keep circling. Just keep circling. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just keep yeah. Admire the pylons. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Now, uh, did you uh, did you at all feel a bit of a twinge of emotion when you see the space station and the theme song starts oh, playing? Yes. And I the mean, wormhole opens. And, you yeah. Know. <laughs> I mean, I was laughing, but also like oh, nostalgic at the same time because, I mean, yeah. uh, Deep Space Nine for me, before, you know, the the new track, Deep Space Nine was my favorite of the series, mm. you know, of, of, yeah. even yeah. over TNG, which I have, you know, I, I really enjoyed. But Deep Space Nine was the most consistently good and deep and had so much to say uh and uh, and so uh, yeah i really feel a, a you know a nostalgic twinge like oh can we bring deep space nine back you know can oh, bring yeah. cisco out something. of the wormhole Get cisco. <laughs> exactly right yes i mean you got picard back you know what's yeah that's uh i would love to see a return to deep space nine that was so good what, the, yeah. what they did there yeah even uh just like little moments right so there's we, we have a moment where kira goes into ops, walks across ops, doing what, what it does. Yeah. She looks out the window and stares at the wormhole. I'm like, this is amazing. I, I've just, <laughs> I've gone back to Deep Space Nine. It was so good. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, and there's the series that I know shall not be mentioned. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Discovery. Uh, yeah. I, I do hope that they get get it back into a bit of Star Trekiness and not so much hand-holding and hugging and everything. I, I would love to see Discovery pick up the great series that I think it was in the first two seasons at least. I know. 
Yeah, yeah. It's really become, you know, Star Trek together in our togetherness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hug. <laughs> yes, let's all hug it out. I mean, and yeah, then let's all, hug it of, out. all of the uh, modern um, uh, social commentary mm. nods and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. it just became so weighed down under all that and missing yeah. the, the point of Star Trek. And I mean, and then, you know, jumping a thousand years into the future, into this sort of dystopian future. Star Trek was about a hopeful future. Yes, yeah. And taking us into a time, I mean, I suppose what they're doing is trying to recover the hope, I, I guess, but it just feels yeah. so dark and it doesn't feel as much like Star Trek as the other series do. And and now having Strange New Worlds there as contrast yeah. really the highlights contrast. it even more. Yes, and, yeah. And the the thing is is what it got to the point where we decided we just we were disliking it so much that mm. we didn't want to spend every week talking about how much we disliked the episode. You know, it's one thing to talk about a clunker every once in a while, but yeah. week in and week out, we wouldn't enjoy that. Listeners wouldn't enjoy that. And so we've decided not to, not to cover discovery uh, seasons. Yeah. There, uh, it seemed to, so I liked some choices, right? Going, you know, although you know, we talk about this dy- dystopian future, you know, if there was a good reason for it, yeah, I would have been happy with that. I just felt like we got to the reason for it, and it had to do with someone's emotions. You know, again, right. you know, someone's, you know, and come on, guys, <laughs> this isn't necessarily this isn't Star Trek. Don't do it like that. Here I am being a fan now. Look, I'm talking like one. <laughs> yeah, um, I I like the concept of discovery. I I like uh-huh. the big change of you know going into the future and everything. Yeah, the characters are all very interesting. Um, and you know, you talked about being weighed down by social commentary. If if it drove the narrative, if, if there was a purpose for it, I would actually be okay with that. But I feel like, like you said, it's it's more like that obvious messaging. And you know, I mean, yeah. the other Trek series have managed to have those elements without doing that. I don't know why Discovery struggles so much to say, "I'm going to signpost this right now." Oh, let's go back to the plot. <laughs> so let me signpost this now. Oh, plot time. <laughs> it seems right. to be right. the, the way that they go about it. Yeah. And and like you say, and I want it to be a great series too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is so much to like. I like the characters. I like, you know, I like Michael and I'm like, um, I'm trying to remember all the names now. I'm really bad. Is it? Yeah. Saru and the engineer and, um, uh, who was the, 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 the woman that was the cadet and became the ensign. Um, Tilly? Yeah. Tilly. Tilly. Tilly was my yep. favorite. Although this last yeah. season she changed a lot and wasn't quite the same Tilly, but kind of flat a little bit. Yeah. 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 So uh, mm. it was, it wasn't as, but I, I mean, I really love a lot of these characters, but what they do with them so much and it's so much emotion, so much, <laughs> Oh, you're hurting my feelings. And it's like, Oh, yeah. I just, I just, I had to, had to let it go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure if we hug the DML builders, though, you know, it'll fix everything. Don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Oh man. Yes. Um, emotion is the answer to everything. That's what I've been getting out of the last few seasons. But yeah, <laughs> no, let's see what happens. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, were you going to mention Star Trek Prodigy just then? Is that where you were going? Uh, I was going to mention because yeah. that's just yep. starting now. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the the second half of the first season. It's so funny. They've had these. He, 10 episode uh, arcs yes. of the first season separated by months. I'm not sure what the, the <laughs> rationale is there, but it's a, this is an animated Star Trek show that is aimed at kids, but it is mm-hmm. okay for adults to enjoy too. Like I enjoy it as well. Um, and uh, you know, it doesn't have the quite the same depth and there's some, some you know, humor for kids, uh, but which is still fun, but having captain, uh, uh, now Admiral Janeway there mm-hmm. uh, as a hologram in the, the first half of the season. Uh, and it's been a little different because it's taking place on a Starfleet ship, but outside of the Federation. And mm-hmm. so what does that mean? And um, we get, I think we get, there's this big mystery and that's kind of fun. And we're getting answers to that. Some of that mystery coming up, I think. So I've been enjoying that. It's been a, a good animated series and uh, I, I don't, I'm glad it's not the only Star Trek we have, uh, to put yes. it that way. But uh, but it's it's fun. It's a nice addition to the whole uh, you know the set of Star Trek shows we have. Agreed, and one I can watch with my kids. That's right. <laughs> That's, you know, I can appreciate together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let me uh, let me throw this question to you. I don't know. I can't answer this one. So let's see how you go. What is your favorite worst episode of any Star Trek series? <laughs> oh, think of all the clunkers. What is one that you would just say, "This is my guilty pleasure. I'll go to this anyway." So we and did I won't judge you. Yeah, no, we did an episode recently on the uh, 
the worst Star Trek episodes. I think we did that uh, around April 1st. Uh, yep. So um, the worst Star Trek episodes ever. I, I would have to. The one that always comes to mind whenever we talk about worst Star Trek episodes is Spock's brain. Um, <laughs> yes. That was such <laughs> yep. a weird, dumb so... concept. I mean, I can uh, remote control him, you know? <laughs> yeah. So as yeah. long as we put a little the remote control in his head, we can walk yeah. him around like that. Someone <laughs> could steal his brain and he would not kill him. You know, yes. uh, yep. that one always, uh, it's either that or the, um, well, we we had talked about the 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 Deep Space Nine episode of Run Along Home, the game one. Oh yes, and yeah, that yep. always was worse in my memory than it ended up being when we rewatched it. It actually wasn't nearly as bad as yep. as as in my memory had it. Um, but there is one coming up soon that we're going to be talking about next time we can talk DS Nine, and that's the Storyteller. Um, that's oh, the one yeah. where. Yes. Bashir and uh, and and uh, and uh, Chief O'Brien, O'Brien? Yeah. yeah, go to the village and they have to tell the story to make the storm go away. That's oh, right. Yes, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll I gave you that. three, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, good. No, you, you actually survived that question. I, I would have struggled with it. Uh, <laughs> speaking of um, speaking of the people that made the the race that made that move along home game, that reminds me of uh, of Lower Decks where Boimler absolutely loses it, <laughs> and there's that they're, they're in there, and he's like, "Why yeah. does everything have to be a game to you?" And all that. <laughs> was, yeah, That's yeah. right. That was a great moment. <laughs> that yeah, was another a great good one. callback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Secrets of Star Wars, uh, sticking with the space theme. Uh, I, I mean, there's been a lot of content for them as well uh, to, yep. to go through. And so currently talking about the, the Andor series, um, how are you going with, with them? How, how's their commentary going on that? Well, let me tell you, one of the, the great behind the scenes things that's happened recently is we've recently expanded our panel. We've added a whole bunch of new uh, folks with new perspectives and new interesting mm-hmm. uh, ideas of various ages and backgrounds. And it's really adding a lot to the discussions. I'm really excited yeah. to hear from from them. We still have our you know our, our regulars. Uh, Father Andrew, who's been the host of Secrets of Star Wars, he's as Bishop sent him to go get a can of law degree. So he's a little busier than before. So <laughs> you might be, you might be busy. Yeah. 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 And some yeah. of the other folks have, have gotten a little busy and Thomas center who is off on secrets of middle earth and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. we've added a, a bunch of more people. And so it's been a great addition. Uh, we've, we've had them. they have been talking about the new Andor series recently. Mm-hmm. They're up to episode seven uh, or eight by the time you listen. And it's, that's been a great series. Very interesting. Yeah. Very different. It's very mm-hmm. special by thriller sort of show, which is different from the other ones we've had. Um, but we've recently, you know, we've had the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. We had the yeah. book of Boba Fett before that. We're getting Mandalorian season four in a few months. Yes. Um, yep. And tales of the Jedi. Oh, can't, can't tales miss that. Of the Jedi. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. And so there's a ton of star Trek, uh, star Trek, star Wars content mm. that uh, that's out there to talk about. Uh, and so it's been great to hear them talk about it. And and then they've in between se- the seasons they've had of the different shows, they've had some really interesting discussions. They talked about um, what is a hero and talking yep. about heroes from the perspective of star Wars when the heroes in star Wars, and, um, you know, and they've had some great interviews. They talked to Mark Thompson, who's a voice actor. That's who's right. Yep. Done a lot of audiobooks and that sort of thing. So uh, they've been doing a lot of great stuff on that show. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I like uh, yeah, even things like um, if I were to create a Star Wars roleplay character, you know, things like oh, you know, doing things like that. And yeah. Yeah. Just all these in-between things are actually really interesting what, what they're doing. Um, yeah. Didn't Obi-Wan just hit you in the heart almost every episode? It, oh, yeah. It just, I, uh, I get people were, were again, <laughs> were somewhat critical. I mean, I think that's just the way things are these days. You know, you're going to have yeah. a, a certain mass of criticism. But I really enjoyed and i had my criticisms of it there were some times where i was like that is completely unbelievable yeah. but the character himself yeah. and the journey he went on literal and Agreed. spiritual was yeah. amazing to me the most amazing part though was that confrontation that battle that we always oh my that anyone who's been a star wars fan for any length of <laughs> time has wanted for. is vader yeah. versus kenobi when yeah. kenobi was still at his peak and oh, yes. wow yeah. wow that was amazing definitely it really was yeah uh, and even the line about um about who killed anakin you know that whole yes. the way he's the way i forgot how the line was but the way yeah. it was expressed yeah uh, I, I, I my anakin mouth from, opens yeah. You know, yeah he's yeah. dead oh wow yes. and that's why yeah. obi-wan later on can say to luke you're you know yes. darth vader killed your father 
Yeah, from a certain yeah, from a certain point of view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, because even Luke had trouble with that line, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yes. that was good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, and I've got to say, because uh, I watched Return of the Jedi recently with my son, we felt like watching something. It was a few weeks ago, but the lights that the Obi Wan series sheds, even on that, the, as a backstory to it, it just it what, what's brilliant about Obi Wan is it adds more to the Star Wars universe. It's not just yes. here's some fan service, but it actually fills in some bits and pieces and adds new beats to the, um, a new meaning to the return of the Jedi and the other Star Wars, Star Wars films. And I, yes. I love that. Yeah. 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 In, in fact, they, they almost, they even tried to kind of fix some of the continuity bits. Like how, how could this happen and that happen? And, um, mm-hmm. and, and they do, they did, they did a pretty good job. There's still the question of, um, did Leia not, recognize obi-wan when she was like the, she doesn't really talk like she knew him when she he rescued her when she was a yes. little girl that sort of thing uh but that's yeah. you know the, the, you do what you can i mean it's you, you're yeah. trying to retcon a 45 year old movie <laughs> yeah so it takes a lot of yeah there must be a lot of agonizing in the writers rooms when they're putting these things together right right especially knowing that the fan base will crucify you you know <laughs> metaphorically yes. and literally if you're not <laughs> if you're not careful with how you go with the story that's, telling yeah. that's right yeah all right. Well, uh, let me throw this question to you. Which Star Wars character of any series or movie would be the most awkward for you to be in an elevator with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me tell you, I, as a preface to this, is so that, yeah. that, well, I'll tell you, Darth Vader, I was playing a VR game. Um, yep. Uh, was it uh, how, what was it called? I don't know. It's the one where you you have to you get captured and you're in a cell, an imperial cell, and you you you've been told that Darth Vader wants to see you, and the door opens and you hear him coming down the hallway, and you know you so you're in VR, so it's this immersive environment, and he turns the corner and comes in and towers over you. Whoa! Okay. I was. My heart was beating. <laughs> I was genuinely emotionally reacting to this because wow. I was nine years old the first time I saw Darth Vader on the screen. Yes, and yeah. and had nightmares about Darth Vader after that. He was one scary dude. Yeah, in childhood. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh my gosh! And so yeah, to spend any time alone with Darth Vader in an elevator I mean, that would be very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> very yes, <Yeah>. Lord Vader. <laughs> please yeah. don't jerk me. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Yeah, please leave your lightsaber there. Don't worry. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Watching his hands, see if the force choke is coming. Or yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good one. Um, now, the, another show that we have on the network is the secrets of movie and TV shows where we, you know, don't, can't have a dedicated, you know, show to a particular thing, but it still gets mentioned. So tell mm-hmm. us a bit more about that. So this has been a, f- a fun project and it's uh, we've been really having a great time with it because we get to cover a lot of different things that don't mm-hmm. fall into any other uh, category. And we have a, l- a lot of different people contribute. And we've had, you know, we've talked about the Wheel of Time series that Amazon has done. You know, we've talked about one of my favorite movies, Master and Commander, uh, which oh, yeah. is b- about the, you know, based on the Arby Matterin books. Uh, we've did an yeah. episode on Christmas TV specials. Um, and um, so we've done all kinds of things. We've uh, we've done sci-fi. We've done um, superhero movies. But we've also done like The Offer, which is a series on Hulu. Oh, yes. yep. Was it Hulu? No, Paramount Plus about the making of The Godfather. Um, so. Mm it's a lot of fun that we can cover a lot of different things. And so it's a, it's a really great podcast for that reason. I think it's, it really lets us explore the, those deeper layers and the intersection of faith and pop culture in a broader mm-hmm. context. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's great that, um, cause this one, the panel is not a set panel. It can be anyone. Yep. And you've picked people who are massive fans of particular franchises or, you know, people who grew up at a particular time when a, maybe an older movie that you talk about, you know, so they talk about watching it in the, in the early years. So the mm-hmm. nostalgia is there too, which is really good. Uh, I, I was a massive fan of the Batman, which came out, was it this year? Hang on. No, Ye- was it last year? Hang on. Uh, yeah. Earlier this year, That's, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it was this year. My brain is fading now. I loved the <laughs> Batman, so I'm great. I'm I'm grateful that there was an episode about it too. Listening to the analysis of that, so uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um. So, uh, here's a question for you about this one, by the way. It's like my my AMA question for you. Okay. In your estimation, which is probably the best Marvel movie to date? Which one would you go back to? Oh. Uh, 
I always enjoy the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. You legend, well done. That's, that's the one. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, good one. The, especially yeah. the first one. I that was yeah. that one. Yes. I I enjoy so much every time I, I see it. Um, yeah. Right from Peter Quill dancing through <laughs> yes. the, the rat infested, you know, swampy yeah. area. I just, I, I love that. Yeah. And I love the soundtrack to it too. It just has I agree. such yeah. a great feel to it. I, I, I really enjoy yeah. that movie. Yeah. Well, great choice. That's my one. That's my go to. If yeah. I want to watch a Marvel movie, I can watch it a dozen times and I'll, I'll enjoy it every single time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the one that I had the least expectations when it released. I thought, oh, where are they going with this? And it, it right. surprised me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah, the dance off is a classic. It's just <laughs> can't get past that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh I um I did go and take my son to see Thor what was the last one called? Oh, again? Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. Which I thought was okay. I I it, it was a little I, disappointing. A lot to of fans me. didn't yeah. like as much. Yeah. yeah. I I thought I, I thought it was more entertaining than Ragnarok for me. Mm-hmm. Um it's not a not a thinking person's movie. It's simply just no. pure entertainment. I think it was aimed yeah. at entertainment more than anything else. Yeah, there were a lot yeah. of laugh out loud, funny gags. Uh, but yeah. as a as a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, it mm-hmm. it was missing something. And honestly, uh, Thor without Loki is missing something. That's a good point. Yeah, and I, and I really That's felt true. like that there that element. I really wish that element was there, and obviously it couldn't be because of the whole. Loki being dead thing, uh, although yep. maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> Loki season, <laughs> yeah. season two is coming. Um, yep. So uh, that's kind of, I, I felt like it was missing that. And that that's so that, um, and among other, some other thing, issues I had with it, but that was the big one. Fair call. I thought um, from an Australian perspective, Russell Crowe, as Zeus, oh, I yeah. felt like that was the easiest money he's ever earned <laughs> to walk, prance around in a, you know, do a terrible Greek God accent and, and just repeat lines. I feel yeah. like this guy has made money for doing barely anything at all. Oh my gosh. I didn't even recognize him at first because of the accent yeah. and the, just everything. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was a, yeah, yeah. that was a funny scene. Yeah. All right. Um, now we are at the very end of our list of shows. Here's the last okay. one. So here's one that you host, the one that you have a, a big interest in, and that yep. is the secrets of technology. So I actually have a question now. I'm not sure if you started with this uh, in your last show because I haven't listened to it yet, but you had mentioned something about a bit of a, a bit of spillage that had happened in your office. Did that did that make it into the last yes. show at all? So one of the yeah. our recurring <laughs> segments on the on secrets of te- technology is Dom's tales of tech woe. Yes, and that's right. Because I've always got something bad happening for some reason. Um, uh, so I had a big tech problem at home. Uh, the other day, my son, uh, I finished recording and, for the day and had gone to go get some lunch. And my son said, Dad, can I go vacuum the office? They they do chores in order to earn screen time. And so that's one of the things. And so mm-hmm. vacuuming, uh, he was going to vacuum into my desk. He said, sure, that's not, not a problem. And uh, so meeting my lunch, I hear this beeping coming from the office. And I'm oh, like, boy. that is my UPS. It's uninterruptible power supply. It's the battery backup. That mm-hmm. only beeps when it's not getting power. He must have unplugged the cord for it or something. So I, I come in and and I see him dabbing at my desk with a towel. Like, why are you wiping the desk Uh-oh. off? And I realize, why is the desk so wet? <laughs> and I realize he has spilled the large cup of iced tea I had left on my <laughs> desk, which I know everyone's already saying, you know, dummy, you're not supposed to leave open cups of <laughs> drink on your desk. And I I know I've always been very careful. I didn't, you know, uh, you know, account for the children. And so he had spilled it and rather than come and get me right away or yell for help, he tried to to, to deal with it himself, except I have this big flat Ikea desk and all of this Mm -hmm. tea went off the back of the desk, like a waterfall straight down into the backup battery supply and all over my power strips. So I was frantically unplugging things and turning things off. The power, the, the, the UPS was toast. It, uh, you, literally, I could uh, smell the burnt. Uh-oh. It, he let the magic smoke out. And, uh, <laughs> and I was a little worried. Yeah. I immediately got it out of the house, onto our back mm-hmm. patio, took the batteries packs out, um, and, and I, had to, I, I, re, I have a new one sitting next to me, the new UPS, right. because that one was toast. And I ordered a new power strip because um, I don't trust a power strip that's been soaked in tea anymore. Mm-hmm. Fair um, enough. Yep. And then I, I had to scrounge throughout the house scavenging, 
you know, power strips so I could get back to work again. And oh my gosh, it was for about 15 minutes. I was, I thought the world might be over. Like he might've destroyed everything. He yeah, didn't. Yes. Yeah. So Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was one of my tech tales of woe. Yes. Yeah. I had a few of those. I guess these things happen, don't they? That's yeah. the, that's part of family life, isn't it? it Where, yes. I can see yeah. the cup I was about to ask you. Yep. Yes. Now I have a cup with a secure lid that uh, my IC goes into that is a uh, spill proof. It's one of those hospital cups. So they're made to be right. not spill spillable. I was going to say, is it like vacuum sealed and you know, there's a special <laughs> yes. way to open it and <laughs> you need a key or something? He'll, or? <laughs> he'll find a way. We, we, his nickname as a child was the destructor. So he often okay. found a way to destroy things. I should know better. Right. <laughs> From now on, you clean somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Or I'm yeah. present. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, just a brief, because uh, I know that you're a big fan of all kinds of technology. What's happening in the world of technology that's most significant right now to you? So the big thing that one of the, so the show, what we try to do is try to uh, help explain it, how to best use technology from a regular person perspective. We're not, mm -hmm. a lot of tech shows are aimed at Uber geeks and we try not, we try to bring it down to a regular folks level. Um, but the most important aspects of this is how to use technology in a way that is ethical, moral, good for you, uh, in you, for yourself and for your family. Uh, and mm. that's, a, that's the thing. So there's a lot of technology and you, frankly, you can't get away from it, you know, anymore, even just, even if you wanted to, but there's a lot of good uses for technology and social media is not all bad. And we mm -hmm. wouldn't have this if we didn't have social media, you know, the, the podcasts and all that sort of stuff. So, the question is, is how do we use it best? And that's really what we're about is helping people use technology in a way that's, that's good for them. So yep. I think we do a pretty good job of that. Yeah. Are there any technological developments you're excited about with devices or rocket oh. launches or anything that's, you know, that you're that's yeah. getting you thinking or? Well, I mean, I'm notoriously an Apple fanboy. I love all things Apple gear. My first computer was an Apple IIe e uh, computer. The first computer I ever used wow. was an Apple II plus uh, mm. back in when I was in grade school. So uh, the, I, I've been, I'm a long, big Apple fan. So anytime they have new products out, uh, I love it. The Apple Watch Ultra. So I got a new Apple Watch when they introduced them. I got an Apple Watch Series 8, which is like their regular mm -hmm. Apple Watch. I'd, my old Apple Watch was several years old and the battery wouldn't even last a whole day. And it was, it was time right. to upgrade. And I looked at the Apple Watch Ultra. I'm like, wow, that's that's really expensive for, for that. I, I mean, I'm not a mountain climber. I'm not, you know. Yep. But, but I look at it and I'm like, that is an awesome piece of technology. It really I mean, is. Yeah. The, the battery lasts for days. I'm thinking, you know, actually, when I go camping with the Scouts, it's really hard because my battery will, you know, only lasts for a day, you know, with the ultra people are talking about, they get four or five days of battery life out of it. And wow. And it, it does all those things that all the other Apple watches do, which, you know, all the great little features. Um, so I'm really excited by what they're doing with that. Um, I'm also really excited to see what Apple does with augmented reality. They've got this uh, AR glasses headset or something coming that's been talked about for ages mm -hmm. and you know when apple does you know they take their time they try to get it right they don't release a product that's half thought out or half baked they really you know put some t put the time into it to make sure it's right so i'm really curious to see how they're going to make this a great product and 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 then really what's important is what do developers do with it what, what software Correct. is written yeah. for it um yeah and that's that's what will be interesting yeah, it would be interesting to see what what are they going to bring to the table in, with you know with AR glasses because uh, many have tried and you know VR is popular for gaming and things and it's developing some other uses as well but it's not main well I'd say it's not mainstream in the sense that not everyone is really thinking yeah I've got to get that like I've got to get an iPhone or something else right. so it will be interesting to see what they what how they're going to sell it you know in terms of the message of why people need it or or need to use it yeah it'd be and interesting. They they're really yeah. good at pivoting. Like with, with the Apple watch yeah. when it first came out, they tried to sell it as a, a communication device, you know, keep in touch with mm -hmm. people. And it was and it didn't convince me, you know, at first. Yeah. And then over time, the way people used it and the software, the developers wrote for it really turned into a fitness and health device. And, you know, in, in some other ways of using it. and and that it's funny because an Apple pivoted, and embraced that, uh, which is another thing they're really good at is, is embracing yeah. that change. And they, they saw where, and I think the same thing might happen with AR VR. They'll introduce it. Mm -hmm. They'll tell a story about it and then people will get a hold of it and they'll 
f- f- use it in ways that maybe Apple didn't anticipate that will be very interesting. And so I'm really curious to see what happens with that. Yeah, very true. With the watch, yeah, I wasn't sold on it for a long time until, uh, and but then I, uh, what got me was, oh, uh, this would be useful for, for me at school in terms of getting notifications. I can just quick, you know, is that email important? Yeah. I'll read it right now on my wrist or I get rid of it. But then also the, you know, when I'd go for a walk or just be walking around, you know, casually in a place. And then it suddenly says, you're walking. Would you like us to record this for you? I'm like, great, good. I can, you know, so you can start tracking your fitness intentionally or unintentionally too, which is good. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I love that it, it tracks, it does heart rate tracking. Um, mm-hmm. There's, they, they're now doing, a, you know, temperature variations and cardio tracking. Uh, when they come mm-hmm. out with one that does, uh, uh, I have type 2 diabetes, and when they come out right, with right. one that has a blood glucose monitoring, which they're working on, it's a very tough problem to solve, uh, yeah. you know, to non-invasive uh, blood glucose measurement. Um, but when they get that, I'll, I'll buy it on day one because that is a huge that will be amazing. difference. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So many people around the world would benefit from something like that. Oh, and yeah. that's, that's technology solving real human problems. That's amazing. Right. Yeah. I mean, they talk about all the yeah. time, how many people have been saved by the heart monitoring of their watch. Mm-hmm. Doctors come right out and say, you know, you, if you didn't get that message from your watch and come to me, see me, you'd be dead and you wouldn't, and no one oh, would, wow. you know, there would, no one would know why, you know, or, or we yeah. know why now, but we wouldn't, have had that warning. Yeah. Did I read that the most recent watch has, uh, I think even the phone now has car crash detection as well. It will call yes. emergency services if you're in an accident or something. Yes. So that's yeah. you, so if the car crashes, it, it has a variety of, of sensors, not just an accelerometer, but other ones too, that mm. detect like the even detect um, pr- pressure, air pressure changes in the car cabin from the deployment of the airbags uh, oh, wow. is one of the sensors. So it puts it all together <laughs> It says, and then it will alert you. Say, hey, you know, I I think I've detected a car crash. Are you okay? If you if you say no, or if you don't respond, then it calls emergency services and brings them to your location, which is really fantastic. Um, although yeah. they've had a problem where it's been going off while people are on roller coasters. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, but I'm sure that's a, like an adjustment to the yeah. software. And so some, some Apple interns are going to be riding a lot of roller coasters over the next six months while they get that figured exactly. out. <laughs> yeah. For work, for work purposes. Of yeah, that's right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well do, you go Star Wars the experience while you're at it too, just to make sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For work reasons. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Well, uh, here's my tech question for you then. Um, and I'm going to warn you that you're going to lose a quarter of your audience and of Secrets of Tech by answering this question. So okay. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Lena inspired this question, by the way, I'm going to give him credit for this. But if you had to spend, you know, four or five hours in a room with with one of the following groups of tech fans, which would it be? Would it be Apple fans, Windows fans, Android fans, or Linux fans? Um, well, I'd have you can to only choose one, Dom. Yeah, I know. I'd have to choose my people. I'd uh, choose the Apple fans uh, to spend the spend the, the time with. I mean, we we have so much in common. Um, it's funny. Uh, Windows fans. I'm I'm not even sure that there. Are, I've ever met Windows fans. <laughs> I don't know if there's a fandom around it, is there? No, yeah. there's a there's a corporate use for it. I don't know if there's a fandom like a diehard set of Windows people out there. Right. It's not like Linux yeah. people. Like Linux people, well, I mean, I spend a lot of time on this po- on Secrets of Tech with Linux people, and Linux mm-hmm. people can be a little uh, rabid at times. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like Apple people can be. So uh, it is. Yep. It, they're very very passionate about Linux. Um, Android people. Um, yeah, I I, they, I I think there are Android fans, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I know if they're Windows fans. But but if I had to choose, it would be it would be my my tribe would be the Apple fans. Yeah, good one. I feel like the, in the earlier days, things were more hostile online between Android and and you know Apple fans. But I think that I feel like that's calms down a lot now. Like it's not as not as big a problem online as it as it might have been at one point. It used to be like, oh, you know, Android's copying Apple, Apple's copying and- copying yeah. Android, and you still see a little of that. And um, and you actually you see it more from the companies trying to stir it up. Like, well, Samsung is always comparing itself yes. and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. But I think for a lot of people, these the phones have gotten so similar, so powerful, and and you either I mean you either have you're invested in your ecosystem i've got all these apple That's apps it. you know and or i've got all these android apps and it's it does for me and really it's about the apps there's a facebook yeah. app on every on both phones there's a instagram app you know that sort of thing and really that's what matters in the end 
Yeah, I'm really grateful that there is a lot more interoperability between these different companies. So, like for example, my work uses Microsoft for pretty much that's that's who we've sold our our soul to, so to speak. And every every company does it. Uh, but being able to use all the Microsoft apps now seamlessly on my all my Macs here, on my on my iPhone, all of that, it's made it's just made life a lot easier. I switched to I used to have um, Dropbox, which I loved. There was nothing for me in the early days that mm-hmm. was equivalent to it. Yeah. Uh, but then Microsoft uh, came out with OneDrive. But for a little bit, at least here in Australia, a little bit cheaper than the cost of Dropbox, I got OneDrive, but then I got all the Microsoft apps. It was cheaper than subscriptions to Dropbox. So I switched across to that. And again, nothing against Dropbox. It's really good. I, I, I love it. Um, but again, it's all seamless. So, uh, you know, I've got my, I've got my um, MacBook Air right here next to me. I've got my Mac yeah. Mini right here. And it all works, for, you know, across one to the other, which is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been a Dropbox uh, person for ages myself and uh, everything, yeah. everything is, is on Dropbox for me. I, that's where I store all, all my files so that they're always there wherever I am, whatever computer I happen to be on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have never sweated more in my life than when I was transferring everything from Dropbox to OneDrive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it all worked. But I thought it was the most nerve wracking moment of my life. Just watching it all go across. Oh, <laughs> I would have copied it to a, to a hard drive and then copied the hard drive so that the hard drive is there. Oh man. Yep. I would have. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I would have too. After, um, yeah, after destroying an episode of Catholics of Oz that couldn't be released from my last, uh, I don't know if you remember where I used to, I used to save straight to um to to OneDrive, thinking, oh, this is quick, it'll just go straight to OneDrive, and then there was a little internet glitch and lost the whole episode. Yeah, I've learnt my lesson now, Dom. So it's never yes. going to happen again. <laughs> Always record to the drive, not to anything Correct. that syncs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was being smart, but I clearly wasn't. <laughs> the internet had other had other ideas. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got one final question for you before we wrap it up. Then. And that is, um, you're the CEO of StarQuest. How would SQPN look to you? What would it look like if you had unlimited resources to run it? Oh, What's I've, your dream, Dom? Oh, I've dreamed this dream. <laughs> so <laughs> I, would, uh, I would love to hire producers for the shows, especially mm. some of the shows that need a little more, like they have bigger panels or pools of people like movies and TV shows and star Wars and, um, or even some of the other shows, I would love to have producers who help produce, do the research, like, you know, get mm. people to be on, you know, interviewed sometimes or, you know, help the hosts. I would love to remunerate, remunerate the hosts and panelists for their contributions. Like I said, everybody volunteers all this time. Um, and I know not everyone wants to be remunerated and I get that, uh, but I would, mm. uh, there, there are certain people who contribute, who I know um, th- they would love to work for Starquest and do it full time, uh, mm, you know, sure, do, sure. do this sort yeah. of work. And I would love to hire them. Uh, so, so that's yeah. something I was thinking of. Um, I'd hire uh, audio editors and video editors and we'd add more shows. You know, this, mm-hmm. this, we have so many, ideas for shows that we would love to do that we just can't because we don't have the resources to do it. You know, I would love to do a, um, a, a book show, like a, a close, yep. re- close reading podcast, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, let's, let's read, you know, or something along those lines. Um, you know, it, there are other franchises of shows that we could, um, like, you know, Dr. Who Stargate, that sort of stuff. There are other franchises that we could dedicate a whole show to, um, that sort of thing. So I would love another history show that, that is more universal Catholic history. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be something that's high on my list of things. So yeah, if I had unlimited resources, that's, those are the sorts of things I'd be adding. Great. Well, if there's anyone listening with unlimited resources, (laughs) just saying, (laughs) just saying, (laughs) yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, uh, you know, it's been an epically long show. I don't think we've almost reached two hours in a show before, but that's, uh, yes. that's the growth of the network you know, um, <laughs> over time. Um, and I'm not sure if it's ticked past midnight for you. So, uh, I will, uh, we might wrap it up here so I can let you go to bed or, or do some other work. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. So before we finish, I do want to thank you all for um, for sticking with us for episode 86 of The Catholics of Oz. And we'd love to know your thoughts. I mean, we've been talking about all the shows on the network. So, you know, send some love to your favorite shows, whether on Discord or, or any other way. Um, and tell us what you, you know, what you think about what's a show that's been good for you. What's a show that's touched you maybe and, and maybe maybe changed your life. I mean, there's so many great shows that that um, that have an impact in different ways on this network. Uh, while you're on the SQPN website as well, you can um, check the Insiders Club newsletter to get updates. You can subscribe to that. 
sqpn.com slash about slash newsletter. And you can also find uh, more about uh, our shows at uh, facebook.com slash Starquest Media or on Twitter at SQPN. There's all the socials. There's Instagram as well. You can sign up there too. Yep. Starquest Network. Wrong? Yes. Yep. The Starquest app. Network. Yep. On, yep, so on search for all those. Yeah. Yep. Um, and also, uh, don't forget the good old Catholics of Oz. We've got a Facebook page of our own, catholicsofoz.com. Uh, sorry, I'll try that again. Facebook.com slash Catholics of Oz. I should probably put glasses on. And you can join us there to discuss our episodes. Um, don't forget Discord, sqpn.com slash Discord. Probably the premier way now to stay in touch and, to, and also to meet with other fans and to meet with show hosts and, and talk about topics there. And you can also reach us by good old email, catholicsofoz at sqpn.com. Don, before I say thank you, is there anything else you wanted to add to cap off the show? No, just thank you, everyone, and thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show, Dom. Um, thank you. And I look forward to doing this with you again in the future as well. And like you said, our dream sometime one day in person, it has to happen. We'll have to see how that works. Yes, yes, someday. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We should be saying your place or mine. <laughs> your place. Yeah. I want to go to Australia. <laughs> oh, perfect. All right. I'll, I'll tell the animals to behave while you're here as well. It doesn't look too hostile. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you all for listening to uh, episode 86 of The Catholics of Oz. I'm your host, Lindsay Sand, and looking forward to speaking to you in our next episode. <laughs>